NBC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation of the IZOD IndyCar Series. Sao Paulo, it's Brazil's largest city and the state is the economic powerhouse of the country. It's also renowned for being the birthplace of many a famous racing driver. For us today though, it marks the first of two international stops on the IZOD IndyCar Series calendar and in its young history with the series, this venue has already produced moments to remember. This two and a half mile track supplies high speed straights and extremely tight corners, making balance, stability and compromise the most used words of the weekend. But there's been no compromise when it comes to the winners of 2013. Three races, three different winners, including first timer James Hinchcliffe, his Andretti Autosport teammate Ryan hunter Ray, and the most recent victor Takuma Sato. The diminutive Dynamo became the first Japanese driver to win an IndyCar two weeks ago in California. And speaking of wins, it's something this man hasn't done in a whole year. Penske's power man, Will Power, has won here every year. So the question begs, can he break the drought today? But there's a twist to that story that affects his chances. The NBC Sports Network welcomes you to IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon. Fourth year in a row for the series in Sao Paulo, and the story on everyone's lips today is are we about to see a fourth different winner in as many races? Hi folks, Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell, Jan Beekers, Robin Miller and Kevin Lee on pit road today. And when you come to Sao Paulo and to this racetrack, everyone's always considering weather because this city is colloquially known as Sampa, which is the city of drizzle. However, today, although there's a few clouds around or fog, it is looking good. It's been a very solid weekend. Hey guys, so much has already happened this weekend, particularly in qualifying. Jan, tell us what has gone well, down. You have to go back to Long Beach, Lee, and have contact between Tony Kanaan and Oriol Servia. When Kanaan hit the tires, he hurt his right thumb. He tore ligaments in that right thumb. They've been icing it here in Sao Paulo. He's trying to drive with that. He cannot squeeze the wheel. He can use the four fingers, but not the thumb. But look what happened in practice. He's pushing in turn two, gets wide, and pow, into the tires. And Townsend, he amazingly gets his hand off, and he's OK. Somebody else with issues in qualifying, Jan Tristan Vautier, the rookie sensation. Watch this, clips the curb too much in the first part of the chicane, packs it into the wall. Watch this carbon fiber moment of crunch. Luckily, he was OK, but his third incident so far this weekend. Also, James Jakes, this brought out a red flag in qualifying, had an engine issue, had to replace the chassis due to the fire resulting from the, the header fire that occurred on that Acorn Stairlifts car. And because of the red flag, Team Penske, Will Power, and Elio Castro Neves did not put in times, did not transfer. They didn't go for it on their primary tires. They're on the outside looking in. But boy, what a fantastic day for Hunter Ray. Oh, it is all about Ryan Hunter Ray. And what I love about this guy is he bounces back every time. He had a DNF at Long Beach, comes back, lays the smack down, P1 and qualifying by three tenths of a second. Awesome job. That is his second Verizon P1 pole award this year. It's the third time in four races he has started on the front row. It's also the first time in six years that Andretti Autosport has locked out the front row. Look who's up there right alongside him. EJ Viso with a career best qualifying performance and he has got a lot of confidence going into today's race. Solid for Frank Kitty and Kanan as well. You know, it hasn't happened all that often in IndyCar history that a driver's won three years in a row. It's exactly what this man Will Power has done. It's been quite the run. The IZOD IndyCar Series begins the 2010 campaign. Even with the rain tires on, the conditions just aren't conducive to racing. We are getting set for a resumption of this event. Will Power wins the Sao Paulo Indy 300. Torrential rain, unsafe conditions. This race has been postponed until tomorrow. The green flag is out. The Sao Paulo Indy 300 underway. Will Power wins at the Tai Papa Sao Paulo Indy 300. And that's three in a row for Willpower on the streets of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Well, coming into this weekend, he was a heavy favorite and certainly a favorite for the pole, but a red flag in qualifying has him starting all the way back in 22nd. Didn't get a chance. You're just trying to make it uh, more competitive and level the field for everybody? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, obviously, man, yeah, we just got caught out there, but... Um, We'll have to see in the race. Hopefully, yellows fall at a good time for us. It still seems difficult to pass uh, after doing the warm-up there. 
you know, because everyone's kind of trimmed out and, um, you know, realise that if you're not trimmed out, you're going to get past. So um, do our best, man. Just hang on, you know, no, try to keep out of trouble and, you know, salvage what we can from the day. Your goal is always to win. Does the realistic approach change today? From 20 seconds, that's, uh, you know, something abnormal would have to happen for us to do that. Uh, you know, top five is, you know, usually possible from there. So that, that should be the aim. And he went from 17th to 3rd last year at Edmonton. That's Will Power. Thanks, Kevin. His teammate, Elio Castro Nevis, is enormously popular in his home country of Brazil. And do you know that a Brazilian IndyCar driver has never gone to the Brazilian round as the IndyCar points leader? So a little special piece of history for Elio. But I want to draw your attention to 2nd, to 5th, and to a tie for 8th. Names we don't often see that high up. Takuma Sato, Justin Wilson, Simona Di Silvestro. Really good, strong start to this year's IZOD IndyCar Series. There's one man who wants to be number one again. He's with Kevin. Well, Lee, Ryan hunter Ray is sixth in the championship on the strength of a win and two DNFs. So it's been feast or famine for you all season. So are you hungry today, starting from the pole? Well, we're very hungry. We definitely need to uh, capitalize on the opportunity of starting on the front row and, and get, grabbing another pole. Really, uh, really happy with what the guys gave me yesterday and, and just capitalize on the opportunity. And uh, we had a great car, but now you have to change for race day. And, and this track presents a pretty interesting scenario where you either have to gear towards being quick through the messy stuff or, or quick down those long straights. So that's what we're trying to deal with right now. Trying to make a decision for the race is, is the tricky part. How do you approach turn one knowing you have a teammate, EJ Viso, next to you? Well, everybody wants to lead, right? So they, if it's a teammate or not, it doesn't matter. That everybody wants that, that, that first spot. So definitely going to have to charge in there pretty hard. But uh, it's really slick in there, especially on the lighter pavement, on the concrete. It transitions to asphalt. So in that transition, things can go wrong in a hurry. Um, so it, it's a little bit of a, a, of a conservative approach in that you want to conserve the lead, but uh, you also have to protect it. So as in racing, there's always trade-offs. but. Uh, we need to, right now, we need to really figure out what we're going to do for, uh, for downforce. That's Ryan Hunter Ray. He is hoping to eat well today. And RHR, as we call him, is one of the three different winners in the first three races, two of whom are first time winners. And one of those was an incredibly popular win. This man here, Takuma Sato for AJ Foyt Racing. There were so many ple people pleased for the Japanese driver. He did take a trip home, did media and fan conferences it was very very warm welcome whether it's formula one or indycar there's no doubting the passion displayed from the brazilian race fans and that's why they are here today to see indycar's finest gathered for round four when you're a top tier driver like takuma sato who has the philosophy of no attack no chance it's only a matter of time until you win no attack, no chance. It's just everything has to be cat created. Everything has to be confident to be able to attack. And Takuma Sato looks to the inside of Ryan Hunter Ray. Without attack, you don't have any chance. Sato on Wilson. But of course, it's always risk management. Sato on Takuma! Because we used to have Indy Japan, I gotta make sure to have a good result because when I went to the uh, Super Formula or some event in Japan, everybody so much showing on me, uh, which is really, really appreciate. So everybody really looking forward to the IndyCar Series this year. Here at Long Beach, could this be the day that AJ Foyt Racing returns to victory lane? Takuma Sato having a beautiful drive, still leading here. Sticker reds for Takuma Sato. He's got it clear, and now he's got to make these tires last. No attack, no chance. That is Takuma Sato's motto. For the first time, a Japan-born driver is going to win a major open wheel race in North America. Yeah, thanks guys, love you. Takuma Sato takes the twin checkers. What is this gonna mean to all the racing fans back home? I think it's just great news for the Japanese and it's just incredible feeling. And I think a lot of people in the paddock celebrated Takuma Sato's win a couple of weeks ago at Long Beach and this team's first win since 2002. What did that mean for you and for AJ Foyt Racing? I think it means a lot. Uh, it's a uh, brilliant job from the team, tremendous support 
from everywhere really all over the world that has greetings and, uh, and it's a really happy place and I was uh, fortunately flew back to Japan after the Long Beach had a big winning press conference and lots of media work and fans had a crazy and going and it just it means a lot myself to Japan as well and um, you know for the AJ for racing for the for long term preparation now it's time to really pushing hard. Yeah, Takuma Sato now is looking to win for a second race in a row and the last driver to win their first race and then the very next race, A.J. Allmendinger back in 2006. Lee? Uh, Kevin, it was a great day for Takuma and he gave us a pretty interesting closing to the Indy 500 last year, didn't he? Well, here are some names that are looking to be right there in the hunt for the win at the 500 this year. Robin, talk us through. Well, about two weeks ago, Lee, we thought, well, we're not going to have 33 cars. It's going to be tough to fill the field. Not so. Pippa Man gets a ride with Dale Coyne. I think this guy that works with us has got something to tell us about this other <laughs> thing with Panther Racing. But Buddy Rice is going to take a car with Sam Schmidt. He'll run three cars at Indy. That was kind of going to be that was going to be Townsend's ride. It's not going to be Buddy Lazier, 1996 Indy winner. He's going to be driving a car that his dad and him bet. These other two guys, they might be in the race if they get enough money. Speaking of Townsend Bell, he's sitting with us right now, but he was also busy earlier in the week. Maybe we're going to take a look at some pretty nice images here that I know warm your heart and oh, are getting yeah. you excited for the month of May. I had to race back to uh, to Indianapolis to get a seat made with Panther Racing, my old team from 2004. I sat in that thing for about five hours making the seat. Even brought my throwback uniform from 2004 with Panther, the, the blue colors there. So really happy to be back. Exciting, we're going to be racing the Sunoco Turbo Car, the movie Turbo, the Sunoco car that races in the film, and here we are signing away with JB. Have no idea what I signed. He just said, sign here, you're driving, kid. Congratulations. Hey, someone else who's excited is EJ Viso. Andretti's new man, well, he clouded the wall in qualifying yesterday, but guess what? It didn't stop him. He starts a career-high second. You know, you can list the famous Brazilian racing names like Senna, Fittipaldi, De Ferran. Well, of course, you have to add to that Tony Canaan. Hey guys, I'm Tony Canan. I'm here in Sao Paulo, my hometown, my, the city that I grew up with. We're here for the Indy 300 in Sao Paulo, and uh, I'm here in this beautiful place on top of the mountain. Behind me we have the Government Palace of Sao Paulo, and we're going to talk a little bit about the city that I grew up. But when you come to Sao Paulo, for you to, uh, to be able to experience the city, I think, first of all, you should get in traffic and see how good we have. It's a city like New York. It's extremely busy 24-7. You guys should go to the Parque of Ibirapuera, which is a nice park right in the middle of the city, kind of like Central Park, which you can work out, you can hang out with your kids, with your dog, which is kind of neat. Estação da Luz, which means a uh, light station for us. It's one of the busiest in the world. It's definitely like Grand Station. Uh, everybody that actually needs to take a train or a subway, that's where they go. And we're in the seventh largest capital in the world. We are the largest uh, Japanese community outside of Japan. We're the largest Lebanese community outside of Lebanon. We're going to host the 2014 World Cup, the 2016 Olympics. So that's how the magnitude of this city has an impact in our country. I can say one thing. I'll be your host if you want to come to Sao Paulo. I'll be the designated driver. I can take you guys around the places that you guys saw. And please, come visit us. Give me a call when you get here. Yeah, I like following you around in Indianapolis because you're big there and I know how popular you are, but it's really interesting to watch you here in your native country. But there are also some challenges. There are a lot of commitments, a lot of requirements. What's it like racing at home? It's crazy. I mean, I love the fans. I love the energy, but uh, definitely, Kevin, it's, uh, to give you an example, since warm-up, I only had half an hour between warm-up and now, which is five hours between the warm-up and the race. Uh, to have a quick bite to eat. I had done uh, seven sweet appearances and you know I hate to take time away from these guys. I have to take pictures. We have to. It's, it's, it's a pleasure for me but it's definitely stressing. Well you've been impressive so far qualifying fourth running all quick uh, with about a, a hand and a half. How is the right hand and thumb? It's, uh, it's definitely hurting. It's pretty swollen but uh, you know we have good doctors. Tremo and uh, all the IndyCar team with Ollinger. Uh, they've been taking care of me. Obviously it is not a hundred percent but like Jimmy Vasser said to me, uh, we might hurt your left hand now too because you're going quick. But uh, it's going to be a challenge, but um, I think we'll do it. All right, I'll let you greet your fans here behind us. Good luck today. Terrific to see Tony enjoying 
the hometown fans. There are three Brazilians in today's race, Tony, Anna Beatrice, and of course, Elio Castro Neves. When you come back home as a three-time Indy 500 champion, of course, you're going to have a huge following, but Elio simply wants to win at home. In Brazil, we had three races. Mr. Power won three races. Come on. I mean, instead of Sao Paulo, they're calling him San Power. Really? In my country. This is kind of disrespectful, by the way. But anyway, no problem. The good news is I have people, you know, people. We're changing the track. A little bit of the first chicane. So um, his kingdom, you know, there is an end. And that's 2013. So Mr. Power, sorry, buddy. I like you a lot, but... Um, that's it. Enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know Elio, you know that there's a little bit of joking in that, but there's also a little bit of seriousness at. He's got a challenge starting from 18th, and Elio's standing by with Kevin Lee. Okay, thank you, Lee. Uh, you and Will have your work cut out for you because of what happened in qualifying and no chance yesterday. How do you get to the front from 18th? Well, the good news is obviously this track is basically uh, three straightaways that's possible to, uh, to go ahead and... Uh, and pass now strategy wise last year we started from 20th and ended up finishing the top five so there is a lot of hopes um, and um, but as everybody knows in the car series always very very competitive and uh, we just gotta figure it out that way and uh, no doubt i have a uh, not only the hitachi group guys but also team penske behind so we can make it happen and may has been pretty good to you in the past with three indy 500 wins you come in as the championship leader are you thinking about points when you start this far back today? Just make sure you get something good out of it? Well, when we came here, we weren't thinking about points. Now, because where we're, we're going, you got to think about just a tiny bit. Of course, I mean, uh, you got to be consistent. And at the end of the day, we want to collect a lot of points so that when we go to Indy, we're still in a great condition to still fight for the championship. You got a few friends here behind you, right? Is this one of the guys that you guys want to see win? Uh, I don't think they understand me, but we know they're rooting for this guy. It's Elio. <laughs> and for the second race meeting in a row, he leads the IZOD IndyCar Series. You're watching IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon. More from Sao Paulo when we return. At each IndyCar event, a member of the National Guard who has demonstrated outstanding character values is recognized as a hometown hero. Panther Racing, its staff, and managing partner John Barnes help drive this and the Hire Our Guard program, which helps reduce and hopefully one day resolve the unemployment issue affecting National Guard members. We salute the hometown heroes. It's a terrific program and there is the 25-year-old Californian J.R. Hildebrand who has been quite the ambassador, not only for Panther Racing but for the National Guard and got a top five at the most recent race in Long Beach. Quick reminder to download the IndyCar 13 app, simply call Star Star Indy or search the App Store or Google Play only from Verizon. The IndyCars won't be going quite that fast, but this track does have a very long straight where they can hit high speeds. That is very cool. You're watching IndyCar Live presented by Verizon. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Let's join Professor B. You often hear teams talk about going to the Shaker or seven post rig. And here at Delaro's facility in Italy, they happen to have a Formula 3 car on an early style seven post Shaker. And the great thing about this is that all the components are exposed so you can see how the engineering works. Many of the new models, everything is all just buried in the floor and you can't see it. So four of the posts simulate the actual racetrack. The bumps are movement from the racetrack to the tires. Now the other three, let's take a look at the front for example, they take care of the chassis. So under braking, it will pull the chassis down and simulate that load. And with the two other at the rear of the car, let's say you have a high speed situation, all three would pull the chassis down to simulate aerodynamic downforce, or you can use them to roll the car back and forth to simulate G-force. The teams can get all seven of these posts working at the same time with the data they've already collected from their own car. Then they can run it on a seven post rig, make changes to the springs or the shocks, and one day on a seven post shaker rig, oftentimes can relate to maybe over a week on a racetrack. Some teams have already seen the benefit of that work while others continue to develop. When we come back, we'll show you the grid and go racing. Thanks for watching IndyCar Live on the NBC Sports Network, of course, presented by Verizon. 
Milton Paul is great because you have people really uh, exciting about the race in Brazil. Every single kid that you've seen growing up either went to play soccer or race cars. With that, you can produce a massive amount of talent. A great race for the Brazilian drivers. It'll be great to uh, succeed at home, uh, especially because there are so many people that help you along your career. And it would be great to share those moments with close friends. home of open wheel racing the NBC Sports Network welcomes you to live coverage of the Sao Paulo Indy 300 it's round four of the 2013 IZOD IndyCar series and it's the final road street course before all the attention turns to the Indianapolis 500. Hi folks Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell, Jan Bikas, Robin Miller with special comments and Kevin Lee as well and we can say for once here in Brazil at this race, weather isn't a big talking point. It's not really a concern today. All right, the cars are fired. Let's take you to the grid. If you've just joined us, welcome. This is gonna be a good one today. And our defending series champion is on the pole for the second time in four races. And his teammate, EJ Viso, sees a clear track ahead for the very first time in his IndyCar career. Starting on row two, Dario Frikiti rebounding. Tony Kanan's got an injured hand, but has been remarkably fast so far this weekend. James Hinchcliffe, of course, is a guy who wants to capitalize on that Andretti Autosport strength that's on the front row. Guys, we are going to roll through the grid. Good for Bordet. That's a, that's a uh, season best start. But who's grabbing your attention? What are you looking for? And is it realistic, Townsend, for these big names at the back of the pack to be able to come through? Well, I think it is realistic. It all depends on what happens at the, you know, on the first lap or two. Is there going to be some chaos? There's been issues here before with guys charging up the inside and causing lots of ruckus. And you see some big names back here. Graham Rahal was the fastest in the morning warm-up, but he still has quite a bit of downforce. I think guys like Will Power lay the wings back and fly on the straightaway. Jan, you'll hear a lot of the guys say, well, Qualifying didn't go the way we wanted, or bad luck or, or bad timing from the Penske guys. We've got to employ good strategy. What are, what are the strategic calls today? I think one of the strategies will be how many stops you make, but first, Townsend, take us around. Well, if you thought that braking was important at Long Beach, check out this place. There are three major straightaways with the heaviest brake runs that we're going to see all season. There's the main straight braking for turn one, then the second straight braking for turn five, and then the longest straight on any street course in the world from turns 10 to 11. This is going to be the most critical place for push to pass also today with a game of chicken at the end of the straight to see who breaks last for turn 11. To go fast in Brazil, you've got to be fearless. I'm going to show you some onboard shots. We start first with the Acorn Stairlifts machine for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. This is James Jakes, the young British driver who suffered an engine fire yesterday, and that caused that red flag in the opening segment of qualifying. Here is his teammate Graham Rahal, who incidentally was quickest in morning warm-up, and that buoyed his spirits. We'll see if that run can continue. Remember, he was fresh from the podium at Long Beach. Elio Castro Nevis will show us this view from the Hitachi Penske Chevrolet. And we mentioned J.R. Hildebrand a little earlier in the Panther Racing National Guard machine. He'll give us this view. Is it going to be back-to-back -back strong results for JR? He certainly hopes so. And Simona Di Silvestro, the storyline that's following her on this final street slash road course before we go oval racing is can she get on the podium? How about Tony Kanaan with that injured right hand? It's been a gutsy performance. And this year is testing Simon Pagano's resilience and determination and focus. It has not been a year like last year's rookie sensation. So, we touched on strategy briefly before, Jan. What else do we need to pay attention to? Well, let's give you the numbers for what I was talking about. If you only make two stops, look at that. Not really a window. It's a single lap, 25 and 50. But if those windows, they'll expand if you get some yellow. Historically, there's yellow. So if you're at the back of the field, maybe you stop three times and just go for it. Use all the fuel. But if you're up front, I think you got to save fuel and go for two. We mentioned a little earlier in the show, three Brazilians in this race. Tony Canaan, Anna Beatrice, Elio Castro Nevis. Speaking of that caution and the history of cautions at, at this track, Townsend, that throw the, the strategy and make it a little bit harder for the engineers, the most amount of cautions we've seen here in three years, six, the least, five. <laughs> so it's a, it's a place where we see a lot of yellow. 
Well, one of the things that can create the cautions is the curbing down in turn one and two. Uh, if, if everybody, as everybody funnels down in there, it's really single file through that first chicane, but the curves can really, uh, the curves can really launch the cars. Look at this, undefeated at a new track. Well, this was new four years ago for the last three. Penske Racing and Will Power have dominated. There is Will Power again. For those of you just turning on, the three-time winner at this circuit is starting from 22nd. So, getting some heat in those tyres, forming up, ready to go racing. It has been just a wonderful start to this year's IZOD IndyCar Series. Three different winners, two of them first-timers. It has been unpredictable. Townsend, you coined it yesterday in the qualifying show. It's been a season of surprise. It really has, and it's so fun to see the field get mixed up like that with, with two first-time winners like you talked about. I'm really curious, Jan, this morning, well, this afternoon, to see who's going to be running low downforce on the start. I'm looking at wickers on the back of these rear wings to see who might be having, you know, a little more downforce, a little less, and what the compromises will be. And on this back straightaway that they're on now, it is the longest straightaway that they see anywhere in series history, just short of a mile long. We saw this morning with the push to pass, 193 miles an hour at the end for EJ Viso. He consistently has been low downforce and fast. And a big toe, it wouldn't surprise me to see a 200 mile an hour number with the button, with the push to pass button. And when they have to jump on the brakes and make that right hand hairpin, they go all the way from 190 plus miles an hour down to 40 in a matter of a few seconds. This is a brutal track and we've got 75 laps to run, just shy of 200 miles for round four of the championship. Nicely packed up. We're getting ready to go racing the Sao Paulo Indy 300 with the series champion on the pole, Ryan hunter -Ray. Good, clean start. EJ Viso, can he hold off Dario Franchitti for second? No, Dario pushes his way through. EJ Viso got absolutely snookered there by his teammate on the start. Had to give up a position going through that first chicane. Amazingly, they're all getting through there clean. Big changes to turns one and two, particularly turn two, widening it some 10 feet, and that has proved to be a positive move. All through cleanly. And I think that was somewhat calculated. If you're EJ Viso, the last thing in the world you want to do is fight to the death with your teammate into turn one. But Townsend, I think he was a little too conservative, and Dario, with those new black colors, just put it in there and took second. See a few guys in the back there taking a defensive line, going into that next right-hander. Here's Justin Wilson popping on Sebastian Bourdais for position. Bourdais got a really good qualifying run, the best of the season. Anna Beatrice in that bright yellow and blue flower in the mix. She got a car right behind her uh, in Elio Castro Nevis. We'll keep a watchful eye on the Penske machine. This is the critical right-hander leading onto that huge back straightaway. We're going to be watching the push to pass data to see if anybody gets on their button for extra boost. There's Tony Kanan popping on EJ Vizo. Kevin, tell us more. Well, everybody I talked to today talked about how difficult these cars are going to be to handle. Townsend talked about the low downforce. Just about everybody has a lot of downforce taken off. They really trimmed out today, and it's like eggshells going through the corners. Ryan Hunter Ray wasn't sure what he had after the warm up today. He was cautiously optimistic. He's off to a good start, though. Dario Frank Kitty is aggressive, too, chasing him down. Sato on the inside of Bourdais into that turn one two complex. Frank Kitty is not letting Hunter Ray get away. Viso has dropped to fourth. Canaan pushing forward to third. Good, clean, fast opening lap with some decent positional changes. Absolutely, a little bit of debris on the track. The tires are new now. I mean, these guys are running on, on good rubber. That low downforce setup for some of these guys is going to pay a little bit of a penalty as the, the stint goes on and they start sliding around on those tires. Now, remember, Dario is on the alternates, on the red sidewall tires, so he should be racier earlier. The front row went with the black primaries. And if you're wondering about the Penske boys where they are, Castro Nevis has moved forward one position and power has moved to Jan, we've been or Lee we've been talking about uh, downforce on the front straightaway the rear wing right here there's normally a wicker on some cars right across the back there and depending on the size of that wicker that's going to affect your uh, downforce level so if you're running a wicker it's going to look just right across here you can look for a black wicker across the back that'll indicate a driver running more downforce uh, versus somebody that doesn't have one Whoa, at all. EJ Viso just went in hard. That was the section of the track we were talking about where they come from 190 down to 40 miles per hour. 
And that's what happens if you do run low down force. You fly down the straightaway. But then look at now Justin Wilson weaving, trying to get in position on Simona Di Silvestro. And that looked like Bourdais trying to take a spot back. Bourdais back on to Kumasato. There's Hinchcliffe. There's Scott Dixon. At the moment, those guys are running five and six. Justin Wilson, fastest lap of the race early on. And he's doing that on the primary tires. So people like Dario Franchitti now second in the shot on the alternates, not as fast as the guy back on primaries. That bodes well for someone like Ryan hunter Ray who decided to start on these. Andretti Autosport leads target Chip Ganassi Racing. Leads KV Racing. Tony Kanaan solid in third. How long will that hand hang in there? And that was Bourdais on Marco Andretti, that move that he tried to pull off a little earlier. Sato has gapped him. Here's Elio Castro Neves. He's moved up to no, uh, 16th. That's another position gain, so two from his starting spot. Power has grabbed three. Will is up to 19th now from 22nd. Got to say, I'm really impressed with Anna Beatrice here, holding her own here with Elio Castro Neves all over the back. And on the straightaway, we're going to watch here to see what kind of run he can get. It doesn't appear he's got much on the straights, Jan. And I know for sure she's on a low down four setup. She's been on it all weekend with very high trap speeds. And look, he, <laughs> he can't catch the draft. That's the difference with taking that wicker off and laying down the wing. Simon, uh, rather, Tristan Votier on the inside. Nice move there on Ed Carpenter. Wow, Will Power just hits, runs into the side wow. of Graham Rahal. Excuse me. Forceful. He knows he needs to make up positions and make them fast. If you're going to pass today in the break zones, it's not going to be easy. That's for sure. Remember, if you're on the racing line, you've got more rubber on the road and more grip. So if you're passing up the inside, you're on a less grip surface, yep. and you're going to have to be really careful on the brakes. So Ryan hunter Ray is settling into a rhythm now and has taken out another seven-tenths of a second over Dario Franchitti. So he's getting into a nice rhythm, the Andretti Autosport man. He's finished on the podium here two out of the three years, really enjoys the streets of Sao Paulo, and he is in the groove. Now pretty soon, they will get a call from the pits and they will make their strategy. You have a choice right now, stay on it, hammer it, do these kind of times, or start to back off and make a two-stop race. If there's no caution, making two stops is gonna be saving fuel all day. If, again, no caution, possibly they say, hey, stand on it, we'll stop three times. Well, nobody in this series has gotten better fuel mileage through the years than Will Power. You remember at uh, Barber, for instance, Hunter Ray struggled to match a little bit of the mileage. Here is Hildebrand popping on Marco Andretti down the long back straight, breaking for turn 11. Marco Andretti said it was possible to get a podium today. However, he continues to go backwards. Hildebrand making forward road, looking really good. Perhaps that Long Beach result has really buoyed his spirits and he's heading in the right direction. Frustrating couple of events to start the year though. You know, he was in a deep, deep hole in terms of results. He showed up at Long Beach and just produced a solid, flawless weekend. You know, top five result, obviously not a win, but it was solid. And that's what you gotta do to get out of a hole is you gotta put one foot in front of the other. Now, when you watch the four, when you watch Hildebrand, are you, that's the car you're gonna drive. Any, <laughs> any so nervousness? I, so I've been told I'm, uh, I'm shaking from head to toe right now, just hoping Marco gives him a little bit of breathing room. <laughs> if you've turned on a little late, what Jan and Townsend are talking about is our good friend here, Townsend Bell, is in this year's Indy 500, driving a Panther racing car. Sunoco and Turbo, DreamWorks Turbo sponsorship is gonna be terrific. We're cheering you on, mate. All right, buddy, thanks. <laughs> Marco Andretti. The RC Cola Chevrolet continues to push, but he's got a lot on his hands at the moment. He's lost a couple of positions from his starting spot. A little further back, we push back to Oriol Servia, involved in that late race collision with Tony Kanaan a couple of weeks ago on the streets of Long Beach. But up front, it is smooth for Ryan hunter -Ray. Absolutely smooth. He's looking very strong here. It's feast or famine with this guy so far this season. Ryan continues to show how much she likes to lead road or street course races. The defending champ is number one. As we welcome you back to the streets of Sao Paulo, we mentioned earlier in the show, hey, we always have a lot of cautions at this track, at this race. Guess what? We're under our first full course yellow. Kevin? Many coming in. Many wanted to come in this early. Joseph Newgarden here you're watching. He is going to have to change the wing, the uh, nose. But he wanted to come in, I think, early. Sebastian Bourdais in front of him. And the two Penskys who started in the back, both Castro Neves and Will Power, came in under this yellow stop. And the reason for the caution, Anna Beatrice has stopped out on track. So not the result she was hoping for in her home race. And that brings out the yellow for the very first time on lap six there. She is getting rescued. Wow. Only four people stayed out. 
So four people, which are the, of course, the four leaders, Hunter Ray, Frank Keeney, Kanan, Fiso, stayed out. Everyone else has now decided they're going to go for three stops. Very interesting. Giving us a storyline already, hasn't it? So there you have it. The race off pit road shows you who was where. Simon Pagano very effective. It was a tough one for Newgarden, as Kevin was reporting, but we saw why, because he had to take the extra time to get that new nose assembly. Tough break for Anna Beatrice. She was doing a solid job there with a with a gaggle of fast cars, and uh, it's her home race. Let's see if we can get this thing. She can get it fixed. Sounded like a transmission issue there when we were listening to the audio. Engine was still running, but no drive. While we're under yellow, let's take this opportunity to remind you that next Sunday, the three-week break in the Formula One calendar ends. The Spanish Grand Prix on the NBC Sports Network, and that's at 7.30 Eastern next Sunday morning live. There's an encore presentation at 2 o'clock right here on the NBC Sports Network. So things running at a slower pace on the streets of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Ryan Hunter Ray has not been headed in this race. He got the jump from pole position. Dario Franchini, who sits in second, made a really good uh, savvy move on the inside of EJ Viso down into turn one. His good friend Kanan is right behind. Let's hear more about the man in that green Go Daddy machine. Kevin, tell us. James Hinchcliffe was one of those that did not pit here. He wondered if he might because he took some contact early to the front wing. They feared there was damage. George Clotes told me that we think the car is okay and he stays out and he's running in the fifth position. Also, Hinch told me right before he climbed in the car, he said, I figured out how to be really popular in Brazil. You qualify close to Elio Castroneves or right along with him on the back of the truck, which was the case today. And I've never here heard such wild cheering before. He thinks he's really big in Brazil, even though maybe <laughs> the cheers were for Castroneves. <laughs> the mayor of Hinchtown always seeing the positive side, especially when he hasn't finished the last two races. He won the first, got no points from the next two. He wants a big bag of points here in Brazil. Back at Sao Paulo as round four of the championship continues. Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Jan Bikas, Robin Miller and Kevin Lee with you. This is Graham Ray Hall. And he has already been involved in an incident, not his doing, but it does involve the man who's won here three times. Look for the black and white Verizon car. Look at this, Will Power. Yeah, Will's up the inside, not a lot of grip on that part of the track. You can see the front tires lock up on him, and that forces him to push far past the apex. Gives a little love tap to Graham Ray Hollis as he's going by. What was interesting there is you see Graham glance in his mirrors, took evasive action, and lessened the blow. Good heads up driving from the young man. Now, before we go back to green, you probably heard the surprise in my voice when I was saying, what, everybody but the top four pitted? Well, the initial data was incorrect. The top 15 did not take the pits. So that makes a lot more sense, because I was thinking, what? Only four people committing to two stops? Well, it's the top 15. Anybody behind that, I think, did the right thing. Go ahead and come in the pits. You don't lose much track position. And now they're on three stops. And the Penske boys, Will Power, has leapfrogged his teammate, Elio Castro Neves. One of the things I'm watching here, guys, is when you grid up two by two on a restart, the guys on the inside, Dario's Lane, they pick up a bunch of junk on the tires. It makes it really hard getting on the power on this main straightaway. We'll see how that affects, and also Ryan Hunter Ray has the inside run down into the turn one, two, complex green. We're back to racing in Sao Paulo. Look at Tony Kanan in the red car. Forceful at home. He wants to win here in Sao Paulo, and listen to the crowd. Takuma Sato forcing the issue up the inside there. They're too wide. He's next to Simona going through. Great job for TK. Remember, Kanan is driving injured. He cannot use that thumb. That right hand is incredibly sore. It's going to take some eight weeks to heal. He's driving on emotion. He's driving with adrenaline. Tony Kanan is stronger with one arm than most drivers in the series with two. He's got giant, almost gorilla force. Arms. And he's on the alternates, the red sidewall Firestone. So at least initially, when you go back to green, he should be really racing like we saw earlier Just Dario Franchini. Just back there, Viso and Sato both on the push to pass button on that long back straightaway. Can you imagine if Tony Kanan can win in his 200th consecutive open wheel start? That is incredible. His team boss, Jimmy Vassa, has 211, and Jimmy said, I'd like nobody more than TK to beat my record. But today, to have his 200 at home, where he grew up, this could be a really special day for Kanan. No question. EJ Vizo started second in this race, oh, currently Kanan, all the way back in fifth. TK making a look. Inside for Tony Kanan on Ryan hunter -Ray. He does it. He gives the crowd what they came here to see. Down 
the main straight. Just listen when they come back into this complex. But I don't know if Ryan hunter Ray's going to let him go for long. He's got a nice toe here. He pops back out to the inside, decides to tuck back in. Crowd is on their feet going crazy. That's what they wanted to see. Kanan in front. First time we've seen a lead change. Kevin? What a story this would be. At one point, Kanan was just thinking, I'm just going to have to soldier through this one. Don't know how much I can compete. He wasn't 100% certain going into the week that that thumb would allow him to drive. And there have been at least two other times during this streak of 200 consecutive starts when it was in question. Back in 01, after it started, in 03, he broke his wrist badly in Japan, missed the first few days of Indianapolis 500 practice. Remember when Mario Andretti took a ride upside down in his car? And then a heavy crash in 09 at the 500, broke two ribs, and he raced in Milwaukee next week. He took a shot yesterday to numb the pain, felt better today, he did not take a shot today. But Ripe looking back to see Will Power again on the brakes and looks like he's headed right for Tagliani. Again, having a hard time getting that car. Oh, it was contact between his teammate Castro Neves behind. Broken front wing on Elio Castro Neves' car. Interesting to watch how Will Power twice now has had issues locking up the front brakes. Oh, three wide started this. On board with Elio, that was Tagliani out to the right. Elio arrives fast on the scene Ow. and runs into the back of his teammate. This is what it looked like for Graham Rahal. Wow, talk about all of a sudden that accordion effect. <laughs> they stop in a hurry. That was Tristan Vautier, he ran into the back of. So back to it, back at the front, and it's Kanan, Ryan hutter Dario Franchitti, and just sneaking up quietly is the GoDaddy machine of James Hinchcliffe. Let me tell you a guy who's not sneaking up quietly, Tristan Vautier crashed three times so far yesterday, but he has not backed off one bit. He's already up to 11th spot. He's made up 10 positions. <laughs> well, attack, right? He may be taking Takuma Sato's attack or no chance. Ed Carpenter right in the middle of a sandwich there with lots of pressure behind Oriol Servia. Simon Pagino all over the back of Ed Carpenter. When you're Simon Pagino and you've crashed heavily as well this weekend and you see your young rookie teammate making up 10 positions from the start, the frustration continues. It's been a really testing year for Simon, but he's hanging in there and hanging tough. Ed Carpenter, the last car not to pit on that first caution, and it's uh, so far played out well. He's hanging in right there in uh, 17th spot. Update on power because it was our storyline. The three-time winner started 22nd. He now runs in 15th place. We ride with Pagano. Look at Oriol Servia up there. Overcooked the brake zone. Got a little wide. We're going to see if Ed can have a run on him going down to turn one. Back up front, first, second, third. That's what it looks like. Kanan for KV Racing, Andretti Autosport, then Chip Ganassi Racing, one, two, three. Lee, I can't begin to imagine the pain that Tony Kanan is in right now. This is a 75 lap race, torn ligaments in his hand. It is amazing to see not only that he's out there, let alone leading the race. But don't you think this is the one time where the adrenaline is gonna be taking that over? And they also, they reduced the steering effort of the car. They took out the caster, as it's known, to try and make it easier for him. But I agree with you. He's going to be hanging on for life. But there's something about leading the race and that adrenaline I think it'll overcome. And to underscore how much pain he's in, folks, yesterday during practice, he got out of the car and he had to get the team to take off his left glove because his right hand is the one that's injured. He couldn't even pinch his fingers together to take his left glove off. That's how much pain he's in. Not only does he have to hold the steering wheel, remember these are paddle shift cars. He's actually got to squeeze the paddle on the back side of the wheel hundreds of times during this race. Kevin Lee standing by at the Penske area for Elio Castro Nevis. Kevin, what's going on? Nothing, and that's good for the uh, Team Penske guys. They're uh, not making any movement right here. Same thing in Will Powers' pit, just a, a little while down as we go on board with Elio. But if there was any damage right now, they don't think it's significant enough to make them pit at this point. They're still going to try to go through their normal sequence. And that's a good thing for Elio. That front wing assembly, resilient enough to sustain that kind of a hit running into the back of his Penske teammate, Will Power. Luckily, in a track like this, there really are no high-speed corners. Now, some, you know, a little bit of medium speed in that turn 3-4 transition, but he's lucky he's on a track that doesn't require tremendous downforce through the corners.
Canaan, Hunter Ray, Frank Kitty unchanged at the top there. Hinchcliffe, Bezo, Dixon is running six. Sato is seven. So he's made good forward momentum. He's made up five spots. Then Wilson, Simona Di Silvestro, and J.R. Hildebrand in the top ten. There is Will Power. Continues that forward push. He's now up to 14th place. Kevin asked him at the top of the show, are you able to do something about this? Are you able to get on the podium? Can you still construct a decent finish? And he said, it's going to be tough, but I'm going to try. Here he is on Marco Andretti. End of the long back straight and decides that he's not going to try and execute it right there. So early goings, and there's already been plenty happen. One caution, one lead change, and plenty of serious drivers about doing well. They want to be the fourth different winner this year. The Sao Paulo Indy 300 continues here on your home of open wheel racing, the NBC Sports Network. It's round four of the championship, and there's some terrific fights out there. Tony Kanaan, this is the first time he has ever led at his home race in Sao Paulo. He leads Ryan Hunter Ray. Good fight for third there. The black car is Dario Franchitti with the Lexar sponsorship this weekend. It's the first of two times he'll run that this year. He is being hounded by the Hinch. James Hinchcliffe in the GoDaddy machine for Andretti Autosport, the team that Dario used to drive for. And then back to Scott Dixon, who while we're in the break, you may have seen, made a move on EJ Vizo. So Dixon is up to the top five. A little further back in the pack, guys, we want to update Will Power's position. He has now made up 10 spots, 22nd to 12th. He's already made a pit stop, and he's only eight seconds behind the leader of the race. That is a great place to be strategy-wise, because when you make a pit stop, you lose roughly 30, 31 seconds on pit road. So at the moment, ducking in for Will Power, his toughest task right now is getting track position back on the track. He'll pick it up when people pit, like we're seeing for Saavedra. And that's a front wing change. Obviously, there's been some close racing and contact out so far. Second time we've had to see a front wing assembly change. Of course, the other one was Joseph Newgarden. Quick reminder that you can be a part of Honda's fastest seat in sports sweepstakes. Just go to shophonda.com. Another position there for Will Power. Again, a reminder, your chance to lead the start of an IZOD IndyCar Series race in the IZOD two-seater with... Indy 500 legends, Ari Leindijk and Mario Andretti. Will so, Power absolutely carving his way through the field right now. This is impressive to watch on a circuit that so far looks to be very difficult to pass on, but Will Power's really writing the lesson here on how to do it. Frustrated again, revisiting the storyline, the reason why Will Power and Elio Castro never started so far back. They got caught out in their opening segment of qualifying. There was a red flag. They had not laid down a time fast enough to let them advance through to that second segment. And he is a man on a mission. He's made up 11 positions in 16 laps. Look at how deep on the brakes Will Power can go. You can see the car squirreling like crazy at the end of those long straightaways on the brake pedal. He's on those Firestone red tires, trying to make use of every bit of available grip of those softer compounds. Robin Miller is with us this weekend, who's seen just about everything in open wheel racing. What do you think of this display? I think we're going to have to tell Power on these pre-race interviews, quit telling people you can't pass. <laughs> you won from ninth last year at Barber, and, every, and here he oh, is, but roaring through Robin, the field Robin, again. something's happened. He has disappeared from view of JR, and unless he's passed JR, I thought I saw that Penske car disappearing into the distance. And yes, we are seeing yeah, Will Power grand. fall down the timing and scoring. He's now shown in 17th and dropping quickly. He's in 20th now. 23rd. Something has gone wrong for Will Power. Oh, here it is. Will Power, oh. massive fire. Massive fire on Will Power's car. Oil fire out the right-hand side of the engine bay. This is the second time this weekend we've seen a fire. It was James Jakes yesterday. Now, we, we've heard so many issues about headers so far this year. The exhaust coming out of the motor, that's right in the area that the headers come out of that Chevy V6. That's true, and most of the header problems have been Honda related. As you mentioned, this is Chevrolet. He tried to be sure he came to a flagging station where he saw there was a hole in the fence, but quick work by Helmacho to get there with the extinguishers much quicker than what happened with Jakes yesterday. Only thing he can do there is take the steering wheel, which is probably $50,000, so that doesn't get burned. <laughs> wow, Will Power, what a shame. He was on a charge. That would have been a terrific story to follow all the way to the end. 
because he was making very light and fast work of it. The whole Metro guys, the safety team on the scene and extinguish the fire on the 12 Verizon Penske Chevrolet. Will thanks the fans because it was a terrific display and they enjoyed watching him carve his way through the field. And some of his peers and competitors go, whew, he's out of it. <laughs> Kevin. You know, it might be a little bit of a question here whether you're going to come in or not because you want to get to lap 25 to be able to make this a two-stopper. And all the fast guys, I think, are trying to make this a two-stopper, but that's a real gamble if you don't come in under caution. And it looks like just about everybody is going to come in. I know Franchitti, I know Hunter Ray, I know Sato, uh, Hinchcliffe, and others are going to be coming in. So I think we're going to see just about everybody take off, but then they're going to need a lot of yellow in these next couple of stints to make it home on two. Very interesting. And Kevin, as we know, just because the teams are set out doesn't mean the drivers will actually come in. Sometimes that's some, some of the gamesmanship. So let's see if, in fact, when they lay out the tires that the drivers are actually going to hit pit road. And folks, if you're wondering when we saw them on the front straight there, why aren't they diving for the pits? That is always parallel with the front straight. The pits are located in a different area on this track. So, second caution within the first 18 laps. The first for Anna Beatrice, the second for the charging willpower. And our race leader is Brazilian, Tony Canaan. Took the lead from Ryan Hunter Ray half a dozen laps ago and has enjoyed a clear track out front. It's been some good passing moves. It's been good tight racing. And no one yet really showing if they have a lot to charge. This is going to show us this fire begin in Will Power's car. The view from Graham yeah, Ray Hall. Will Power just past Graham Ray Hall. You can see that bright orange glow just on the lower right hand side of the engine cover as uh, probably oil hitting the headers or some sort of fluid uh, hitting the exhaust and starting that fire. The pits have just been declared open. So yes, they all passed the pits last time because they were closed. So we still don't have the indicator if they're actually gonna pit or not yet. And that again will be past the start finish line. We'll see who decides to peel off. If everybody peels off, then obviously it's status quo for everyone. But if someone decides to stay out, all of a sudden we have different strategies in play. Give the Penske team too a chance to take a look at that damaged front wing of Elio Castro Neves. So this caution could be timely for Elio. There's a good look at the field. Canaan, Hunter Ray, Frank Kitty, the GoDaddy machine of Hinchcliffe, then Dixon. Takuma Sato has been steadily chipping away at it. EJ Viso, who started on the front row, has fallen back to seventh, but he's still well within touch. And this man's teammate, Simona Di Silvestro, still very much in play with the front runners in the top 10. Tristan Votier, the rookie who started outside the top 20, has been that, dynamic. Yeah, it's, it's really impressive. When you're a rookie and you crash three times on the first day of practice and qualifying. On your first visit to this on place. On your first visit to this place, and you had the incident at Long Beach, you've got all this pressure from your team owner, your team manager, everybody saying, hey, rookie, chill out, calm yeah. down, bring it back. The fact that he is still charging and doing it with uh, exceptional skill and poise is really impressive. That's when they say Take a breath, bring it back 10% or we'll start showing you the parts bills. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we saw the first few. Let's see if everybody does it. So all the front runners on pit lane. And <laughs> racing to the line. The nice thing is that now everyone's going to be obviously on the same strategy. This is awesome, Kevin. Here they come, 50 miles an hour down this long pit lane. Dario Franchitti has the most advantageous pit position. He's at pit out. He comes in running third. Ryan Hunter Ray right in front of him will be pitted right behind him. So Franchitti has to swerve around Hunter Ray. Hunter Ray running in second. Kanan is pitted back in the seventh spot. And a quick stop for Scott Dixon. He's nearly going to get back to the front. Hunter Ray beats everybody out by the light. Dixon. And Tony Kanan falls from first to third. Sato moves up to fourth. And Kevin, what we got to see because we we're looking at Tony Kanan is the fuel probe did not go in quickly. So Kanan loses two spots. It's so critical how fast you can Look get the fuel Scott in the car. Look at Scott Dixon gaining three spots. And how about that Panther crew? Four spots on the pit stop. Good for Servia as well for the Panther Dryer Reinbold entry. Also grabbing three very valuable positions. Not sure if you guys caught it. 
Frank Kitty displayed a, quite a bit of frustration with James Hinchcliffe entering pit lane. Hinchcliffe was crowding Frank Kitty. Dario raised his hand out of the cockpit saying, what are you doing? Well, what I can tell doing? you exactly what Hinch is doing. He is making use of every bit of, of uh, advantage he can. If you can just crab up on a guy in pit lane, that maybe is 20 less feet that you need to, to, to beat him coming out of the pits. There's there's nothing in the rules that prevents you from, hap from that happening once you hit pit lane. So in that space approaching pit lane, you can crab up on a guy. Dario, none too pleased. <laughs> Well, coming up in just a moment, Joseph Newgarden shows us how to navigate the last turn here on the streets of Sao Paulo with Avis, own your space. Why is Avis right for me? They know I'm like any working woman, but just a little bit different. They understand that like every other professional, I have meetings I can't be late for. And they even give me something with enough room to slip out of one outfit and into the tight black number I brought with me. Hi, you guys ready to work today? Avis, it's Gabby Reese's space and it's your space. Hey everyone, this is Joseph Newgarden, driver of the number 67 car for Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing. Here in Brazil, we have one of the most important places to figure out your braking points. It's very critical, especially around this place in the final corner. The final corner of Brazil is very, very difficult to figure out where you want to place the car. You're coming extremely fast down the last straightaway, one of the longest straightaways that we go to all year long, very difficult with low down forces around this track to figure out your braking point into the last corner. Now, if you go inside on the corner, it could spell disaster and you could have a horrible run onto the start finish straight, which could leave you vulnerable heading into turn one. Now, if you go too wide in the final corner, that could also leave the door wide open for competitors to duck underneath you and they could beat you to the start finish straight. So either way, you have to figure out exactly what you want to do around that place early on in the weekend and stick to it. There you go, Avis, own your space. Thanks to Joseph Newgarden there for giving us the tips on how to get through. For those of you just turning on to the NBC Sports Network, welcome. This is round four, the Sao Paulo Indy 300. We're under caution for the second time in this race, and that is typical at this event. We see five, six cautions in the three years that races have run here, so it's expected. It's not a surprise. However, we did see some pretty dynamic pit stops there, particularly from target Chip Ganassi team for Scott Dixon, who jumped up and has put himself in a very strong position. He did make it to the Firestone Far Six, didn't qualify as well as he had hoped, but now he's starting to move through very effectively. All right, the reason why we're under this yellow is because Will Power's car caught fire and stopped on the front straight. He's with Kevin. Will, scary stuff. What happened? Take us through that, that onboard fire. Um, yeah, just obviously burnt something with the gear shift because it stopped shifting, so I was looking for the, the automatic shift uh, or the manual shift, but yeah, it was a fire. We don't know what happened, had no real warning. Um, unfortunately, we had such a good car, man. I was passing a car a lap. Yeah, you said before it might be tough to pass, but you definitely showed you could get to the front. Earlier, uh, contact with your teammate, what happened there? Uh, yeah, it must have been him who hit me from behind, yeah. I don't know, I, mean, I guess, you know, it bottles up there and he, uh, he got me from behind, no, no problem at all. Okay, we'll see you back at Indy, thank you. Thank you. Will Power, uh, another tough hit in the points. Uh, I'm told this will take him from somewhere around 8th where he came in back to uh, 17th in the championship. Yeah, it has been a really tough grind for him this season, Jan, hasn't it? It is testing him. It has, and of course it started right at St. Pete under caution. J.R. Hildebrand from behind flies over and takes out Will Power, at least damage enough to where he had to hit pit road. Barber Motorsports Park, it was the start. He couldn't get it in the right fuel mapping, dropped back, and then this gets pushed out wide and loses all kinds of positions. Then they change their strategy. Long Beach, of course, in the pits. He gets into position in the pits, and Tristan Vautier is leaving. Pow, right there. Then he has to have repairs. Again, drops him way out of the order. And today, obviously, he's had issues. But as he said, the car had been great until this fire that related with the shift mechanism. Again, you don't know Townsend if it's exhaust or something that starts to fire, but eventually yeah, I it's think, gone. I think what might have happened is that the fire burnt up the shift mechanism, <laughs> but uh, you never know. And you see there, 
The guys who pitted first on that first stop, and Sebastian Bourdais is one of those, and it's the first time that he has led an IndyCar race since Mexico City 2007. He's a four-time Champ Car champion. A guy that didn't have a great pit stop. I'm not sure why. Justin Wilson, he had been charging through the field. He currently sits last in the running order after coming off pit lane. And, man, it's been a tough season for Justin on the pits. Uh, almost every weekend he's had some kind of issue. One thing that Dale Coyne Racing and Justin Wilson have displayed is that uh, as several drivers, Marco Andretti, Scott Dix, another good example of that, when they're back, when they're mired in the pack, when the when the uh, the chips are against them, they really hang tough. They hang in there and they be patient and mature, make good strategy calls, drive well, just focus, don't lose their focus. Justin Wilson is a master at that. So when he's up against it, he can come back. You know something, Lee, what you got, getting ready for the restart here, what you got to remember is we gave props to the Ganassi guys. Sato, Larry Foyt's team, their pit stops are so much better than they used to be. They gained two spots there. They were great at Long Beach, kept him in the lead. So when you're talking about A.J. Foyt's team overall, the pit stops have really improved. IndyCar's moving as slow as the traffic outside the racetrack, <laughs> which is characteristic in Brazil. So it's a tagliani Borde front row for the restart. Remember, these guys stopped earlier. Elio Castro Nevis, well placed. He was one of those to stop early as well, like his teammate who is now out of this race. What's Bordet got? What's Team Barracuda Racing got in Tagliani at the front? Set for this restart, end of the second yellow. Let's go racing in Brazil. Good for Bordet. Watch for Castro Nevis on the inside of Tagliani. Gets that spot, big oh. look up. Elio blows it. Elio blows turn one. That's James Jakes into the tires. His teammate Graham Rahal stuck behind him, trying to push him out of the way. Ed Carpenter into in the, the fence. Wall. We're going to see another yellow. Rahal going nowhere. Jakes was into the tire wall. And Elio Castro Nevis just bit off a little more than he could chew, heading down into turn one. Caution is out. You know, we talk about the game of chicken, and on that restart, you had Alex Tagliani and Elio Castro Nevis side by side breaking for the corner. Here you see Graham Rahal pleading to get priority on the restart. It's kind of a funny thing that happens here is you get two guys stalled and both are trying to give as, as, as much animated hand signals as they can to the corner work, or actually the safety crew, saying, start me first, please. Forget about him, start me first. It's really a battle for position. The whole Matro team have been worked a little harder than they would have liked today as Ed Carpenter's fuzzies Chevrolet gets rolling. And after a good start of the race, a very clean restart at the end of the first yellow, at the end of the second does not see the same result. Oh, the crowd likes that. Of course he hasn't lost a lap, so if there isn't any significant damage, he could still be a player. Let's show you the replay. Let's show you how it happened. And this was a little late in the going. There goes Castro Nevis. And Bourdais absolutely uh, clobbers the tires there. I wonder if he's got any damage. And then James Jakes just kind of pushes him on through, trying to get him out of the way, stalls the car. I think the anti-stall system kicked in at that point, puts him in neutral. He put it back in gear and got going, not before Graham gave him a little bit of a nudge, saying, dude, come on, get out of the way. Ooh, Jakes ran over a big piece of debris there. Here's Ray Hall. So Graham gets a good jump on the outside, but now he's three wide on the outside. Oh, wow, look at and Jakes look at comes up, and boy, Graham had absolutely no place to go. On board here with James Jakes. Now I'm watch how late he breaks. I'm looking for a Whoa, hole. Whoa, right under Ray, four wide. Boy, yeah, that, Ooh, that, that was quite work. A, 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 a little too deep. He came shooting across three bows, I think. And I wonder if Ryan hunter Ray popping up alongside him there gave him a little <laughs> bit more, I'm going to run this deep. Yeah, but I ran it a little too deep. All right, we're under yellow. You know what we like to do? We'll go to a break so we can show you more green flag racing. Back in a moment. As we welcome you back to Brazil, I want to remind you, Friday, May 17th, the NBC Sports Network continues coverage of the pursuit of the Triple Crown. It all leads up to the running of the Preakness Stakes, Saturday, May 18th on NBC. It's all part of NBC Sports Championship season. I wonder who will run strong at the end like Orb did yesterday. And 
if you've watched this race for the last three years, you'll know that typically it rains. So we traded in the bad weather <laughs> with uh, with the Derby yesterday to have the good weather today. But that was quite the finish by Orb as Orb goes for the Triple Crown. And Lee, what Townsend and I have been looking at during the break is how the pit windows have been sliding because we've had this yellow. So all the cars in the shot here are going to have, for instance, like Bourdais, Tagliani, Newgarden, Kimball, they're going to have to stop two more times. But the cars behind, like Hunter Ray and company, they were on that other strategy. There's been now enough yellow to where they have a shot at possibly stopping only once more. They need a little more help, but they're looking very good hanging back there in those DHL colors for Ryan Hunter Ray. Well, we've been talking about the dynamic start to this season. You watch this. This is the pass for the lead here today. Tony Canard, the Brazilian, at home on Ryan Hunter Ray. And listen to the crowd when he comes back into the complex for turn one, two. Listen to this. That is a soccer-like scream, yeah. roar. <laughs> That I gotta say, he's, awesome. he's the home driver at Brazil today. But uh, you know, every year at driver introductions at Indianapolis, it seems like you know the home crowd in the U.S. loves him just as much because he's he's tough as nails, man. He's a hard charger. Yeah. He's battled so much adversity throughout his career. He never gives up, and he's certainly not giving up today. When he won that championship, 2004, I think off the top of my head, that was a, that was such a satisfying moment for all of his fans and anyone who loves IndyCar because. You know the Tony Kanaan story, you know how hard he has toiled and how hard he has worked and maybe sometimes taken drives that he didn't want to take. And he got that championship finally. And he's one of the most loved IndyCar drivers, and especially, of course, here in Brazil. Time for a restart. Let's see if we can keep it clean this time as we go back to racing on the streets of Sao Paulo. A much closer restart, Tagliani not losing quite as much, but still Newgarden oh. looking inside. Oh. 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 Charlie Kimball oh. contact there with Bordet. Newgarden got into Bordet. Oh, Charlie Kimball's oh. Oh. Around goes Elio Castro Neves. Elio has been spun. Castro Neves, I believe, getting a little help from Scott Dixon, but somebody might have been behind Elio, pushing him over in front of Dixon. And it continues to look good for Ryan hunter Third car in shot, the yellow one, the DHL. And Dreddy Autosport Machine up there. You have to wonder whether Sebastian Bourdais has any damage. He's been knocked around for two consecutive restarts. That McAfee car hanging in tough. Uh, looking at TK there, was battling with oh, Kibble. Sato. There's Sato. That's where Sato does his work. It's decisive. Now, that was a sneak in pass. I don't think Kibble <laughs> was expecting anybody to poke in there, and Sato jumped on it. Think about. The morale, think about the momentum, think about the team spirit that exists at AJ Foyt Enterprises right now. AJ Foyt Racing, this is super stuff. The ABC supply car is one to watch. Dixon, Franchini, Saavedra all on push to pass down the straightaway here. Got some debris flying around for sure that they're kicking up. Joseph Newgarden's going to be feeling the heat from behind. He's in a fantastic position, but unfortunately, he's got two stops in his future. That's what it's like to roar down the front straight here in St. Pa São Paulo into that one-two complex for Tony Canaan. Look at back in the pack here. Votier on Ray Hall. Hinchcliffe is there as well. Sato looks to have a great run on Canaan. Let's see if he pops here. Just got word that Race Control has reviewed that turn one incident. Sato on the inside of, gets him. Yeah, gets Canaan. So Race Control reviewed that uh, melee in turn one, two. Nothing to come from that. The spin by Elio Castro Neves, the bumping and banging, it's racing. Kevin? Castro Neves just came in for a stop just a moment ago. They did not have to change anything substantial on the car. No wing change, just a routine stop of tires. John Erickson told him as he was coming down pit road, we're still going to be OK. We can get home on one more stop. Everybody else has to take one more stop. They obviously have a lot of work to do, but they're still on the lead lap. And as we've seen today, you can make some passes on this track. Watching here, the guys get bundled up at the start there. What that causes is a little bit of an accordion effect. Castroneves comes out, looks to go around. Pagano doesn't realize Dixon's right there on his inside right rear. 
watch Scott Dixon take evasive action from the blue and white HP car of Simon Pagano. This is on board Castro Nevis. Watch to your right, up ahead. Castro Nevis has to take evasive action. Dixon's there. There was no malice in that. It was not intentional. It was just one of those accordion effects, but sideways accordion. On board with TK. I'm sure he's paranoid about that right hand getting any damage on these restarts. Lucky he gets a clean run through there. Charlie Kimball bounced off the wall. Takuma Sato was in the mix. And there's Oriol Servia looking to make a move. Sebastian Bordet is the race leader. However, he pitted on lap seven. We're now lap 28, so that was a long time ago. How's it going to play out for Bordet today is the question that needs to be answered. Look at Charlie Kimball all over Tony Kanaan right now. We're going to come to this back straightaway now. I notice, Jan, Charlie's got the wicker on the rear wing. Might be at a little higher downforce level. This is Chevy versus Honda down the long back straight. Kimball is not on the button, but let's see if he can get a toe aerodynamically. He's hanging close, but not close enough to then get in braking position. Well, let's hold on here. He comes <laughs> to the inside, has a look, but no. Let's take a look at our GoPro biggest movers. Who has advanced? Well, take a look at Joseph Newgarden. Keep in mind there about pit stops as well. He last pitted on lap seven, the same as Bordet. Pagano's made some good moves, Saavedra as well. For our GoPro biggest movers. Now you see how Ryan Hunter Ray has backed off. That's because he needs to back off to be sure he only has to stop one more time. Those ahead, they've already radioed from the pit sink. Don't worry about them. They have to stop twice. So now he has to hit a fuel number and see if in fact he can pull off. He's got it. Definitely got to save a lot of fuel to pull it off. So Jan, you know, saving fuel is, is an art in this series. And, and generally the way you do that is number one, you're gonna use the electronic knob on the steering wheel to cut back engine power and thereby save more fuel. Right. But the other thing that you can do in the car is you lift early at the end of these long straightaways. You actually produce a zone of coasting before you hit the brake. Again, nobody better than that than Will Power, but Ryan hunter Ray, no stranger to fuel saving either. And watch Kimball. Kimball has a great run this time. He's much closer on Kanai. And he's using his push to pass. He just burned one. He's got six left. Gets by easily with that extra turbo boost down the long straightaway. This has been an inspired run by Charlie Kimball. Remember at Barber Motorsports Park when he pulled off that unbelievable pass on Will Power to go forward and just get a fairly strong result. It was terrific for Charlie Kimball. Now Charlie glancing in his mirror there to see if Kanan was going to make another run at him, but he should be a little quicker here. He needs to focus forward and just work on pulling away. And they're on alternate strategies. Kimball has to stop twice, Kanan does not. So one will be racy on his fuel setting, the other will not. And, and you that, can see it right there. Yeah, that was apparent. Bordet, Newgarden, Hunter Ray, Pagano, Sato, Kimball, Kanan, Dixon, Dario Franchitti and Hildebrand. That's your top 10 at the moment, but a variety of those on different fuel stop strategies. We've been talking a lot about Takuma Sato. Let's go to that AJ Foyt pit now with Kevin. Larry Foyt is the team director. Your guy's on a charge again from 12th to 5th. Any concerns with uh, the fuel strategy right now? You're in the same strategy as everybody else up front. Yeah, it's all real close. That yellow kind of came at a bad time for us, so. It's going to be real close, but Takuma's doing a great job. ABC car, we've kind of struggled all weekend to find the speed that we've shown the first few races, but uh, right now it looks pretty good. Just getting that first win out of the way, maybe change mindset, take some pressure off of a driver and a team. It's definitely, you know, it was really well deserved for all the guys. They just killed it in the pits and, uh, and just a, a huge team effort. Takuma did great and, and that it was real uplifting for all of us and, and uplifting for dad too. And, now, hopefully, we can go get another one. Thanks, Larry. And already one great pit stop today. By the way, AJ is doing well after surgery uh, less than a couple of weeks ago. He went to the Kentucky Derby yesterday. We we're told he was on the way home, should already be back home uh, watching this race by now. Surgery in the lumbar region of his back to try and uh, eradicate that sciatic nerve pain. And hopefully, it's working for you, AJ. Nothing worse than that. And hopefully, seeing your driver run strong up front will bring a smile to your face. More from Brazil right after this. Just a glorious day in Sao Paulo, Brazil for the fourth round of the Eyes on IndyCar series. Welcome to our continuing live coverage on the NBC Sports Network. Lee Dippy, Townsend Bell, Jan Bikas. Look wow. at this, look at this, Takuma Sato. He's not intimidated by anybody right alongside the defending series champion, 
good stuff. That's for third. Yes, wow. and they're both on the same strategy. So they both were told to save fuel. Are they saving enough to get him in the window? You think if Ryan Hunter Ray, he didn't let him go by, but if Sato is that much more racy, is he going to be outside his window? And while we were doing that, Sebastian Bourdais apparently missed his pit. You just saw a clip of him touching the top of his head Nolan, like, oh, yeah. man, what a mistake. Did I blow it? So he and Newgarden came in. They last pitted. They first pitted on lap seven. And then, so that move that you saw from Takuma Sato was effectively for the lead of the race. Only if he can stretch his fuel and make one more stop. If, now, he, Jan, if he can do it. Jan, yes. so far this weekend, Chevy versus Honda, who's getting better mileage? At the moment this weekend, the my reports are that Chevrolet is a little bit ahead of Honda in the mileage department through practice. Normally, it's the other way around, but, you know, they can throw settings at it at the race that we haven't seen before. Traditionally, Honda's been doing a bit better race time. So we got to find out if Sato can make the yeah, distance here. No, yeah. what is it? What's the Sato motto? No attack? Uh, no attack, no chance. That's uh, right. But, you know, Larry seemed not overly confident, though, did he? He was like... He said it came at a wrong time. So yeah. I don't. I, I think he, they might have an issue on making it last year mileage-wise, which is why maybe Sato's saying, i got to go now, yeah. because we might have two stops if it stays green. So with 40 laps to go, Takuma Sato is your race leader. And here's how he did it. No push to pass on this. This is just a good, clean run out of the last... Uh, hairpin corner down to this heavy break zone. And I think at this point, Hunter Ray knows Sato's got the corner. Does a great job. Fates back in front of him. And he is pulling away. Our Long Beach race winner who's logged almost 13,000 miles from Tokyo to Sao Paulo, Brazil. He went from California to Tokyo and then across to Brazil. And his fans and the media, everybody in Japan, just ecstatic about his victory at Long Beach two weeks ago. Let's check in with Kevin. Kev? Well, I'm hearing Takuma Sato is going to come in in about eight laps. As you uh -huh. guys were talking about, he's got to drive to a number. The great thing is normally when you think fuel strategy, you think boring racing. It has been anything but that today. Michael Andretti also just told Ryan Hunter Ray, running second, that you have to make this number. He gave him a number in code, not a typical fuel mileage that we would understand, but said if you do not get this number, we're going to be screwed because we'll have to take an extra stop and we'll have no chance. And Kevin, that's exactly what Towns and I have been talking about. It looked like all of a sudden they gave Sato the green light saying, hey, we're not going to make the window. That confirms that Chevrolet is getting a little better fuel economy than Honda this weekend. So now they've told Ryan Hunter Ray, you have to save. Let's stay on our program. Sato got the green light. He's going out like the rabbit. And he's got two stops in his future. The gap back from second to third. The red car you see is Tony Kanaan. He's being hounded by Dario Franchitti, then Scott Dixon. So the two Ganassi cars there in the top five. That's solid. That's the best we've seen them run as a team all season. Absolutely. Look at here at Graham Rahal trying to make up distance from earlier issues. Tristan Vautier as well. But so far, I got to say, Hunter Ray hasn't backed off the pace that much, Jan. I mean, he's only lost uh, maybe two seconds to Sato. So we'll see if he can make the mileage. But that whole radio transmission, just hit your number, as they know. Just keep hitting that number. And with no yellow, we know you're still good for one stop. That's impressive for Hunter Ray. He's kind of in a class of his own, because if we believe what they're saying down there in the Foyt camp, Sato cannot do that. It looks like he slowed up all of a sudden a little bit more, so perhaps he wasn't hitting the number <laughs> just yet. So. I heard you talking. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit further back, let's uh, give a shout to Oriol Serbia doing a nice job. He last pitted on lap 21, so the same as Sato, Hunter Ray, Kanan, Frankitti, Dixon. So Servia's enjoying a, uh, a constructive run today. Then Marco Andretti has forced his way back in the top 10. He's in ninth, and Simona Di Silvestro in 10th. All of these guys in the shot are on the same pit strategy except for Saavedra, so they all need to hit those numbers if they're going to make it on one more stop. Look at Frankiti. <laughs> wow. Now, Frankiti in a Honda. He's behind yeah. a Chevy that needs mileage. Maybe Frankiti's on a Sato mindset. I wonder, Frankiti, though, and the Ganassi team in general, as you look at where they're running right now, they normally are masters at saving fuel. Inside Look at Serbia. Oh, Oriel Servia, we Inside. just said that he's having a good run, and there he goes. Past J.R. Hildebrand for sixth. Ray Hall in trouble. With damage to the oh. right front, he's got bent suspension. The right front is bent. He's close to pit in, so and he should be able to make it to the pits. He's also missing part of his right front wing assembly. That's sitting out at the exit of turn two, out near the wall.
And we're going under yellow for the fourth time in this race. So Sato will still lose position, but not nearly as much. He can race now. He doesn't have to slow down. He can race to get into pit lane, have a quick stop. They don't have to necessarily take all the fuel. They're telling him, go, 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 get here quick. We're going to get you some fuel, and he'll drop back, but probably not lose nearly as many spots. So racking up those yellows. We're up to number four now. But wouldn't, wouldn't this help Sato stay out and just make one no, more stop? No, or is he going to want to pit now? No, I think he has to. They already committed that he couldn't make it. I think he's going to dive onto pit road, and you'll see Ryan Hunter Ray will go by. Ryan Hunter Ray won't pit, and he'll stand on it, trying to get a gap as much as he can on Sato. The ABC supply car heads to pit road. Now, he's not going to need that much fuel, right? Correct. So this should be a pretty short stop. Well, I think normally they would fill it up, but because now they know they're trying to keep their track position, they may do a shorter fill. Lap 38, he's only done 17 laps, so the fill shouldn't take that long to get to, to get to a full tank. But while he stopped, everyone else is streaming by. They can stay on the gas, even though it's full course yellow, until they get to pit out. A little issue on the left rear. That's not going to help. Probably not going to matter. He's going to drop. He's actually going to drop near to the back now. Yeah, he should come back. Because he's going to lose 25 just seconds. Just behind Kimball, I would think. Losato rejoins. Ryan Hunter Ray regains the lead of this race that he had for the opening laps. Let's take you back and show you this stop. Look at the rear left tire changer. Everything seems to be going smoothly, but uh, has a little issue getting the gun yeah. in his hand, it looks like. Looks like the wheel nut came out of the socket itself. They're magnetic, and they're meant to stay into position, but a lot of times when you let the gun down, the nut will fall out, and then you've got to do it manually. But it's still better than the old A.J. Foyt 68-second pit stops when he had the <laughs> 90-year-old guys trying to get the thing in the fuel. A.J. said, I'm going to have to make me some change when we get back to Houston and get me some new crew boys. This is the Graham Ray Hall incident. Whoa. Turn one, turn two. Just looked like he overcooks it. Look at his left Hands. hand come yeah. flying off the wheel as the steering jerks the steering wheel back straight. It's an area of this track that bites and bites regularly. Locks up a right front and there is no Oof. forgiveness in this track if you blow the first apex there. And he's going to be frustrated because he had such a good car, I think, on race pace, quickest in warm-up, had a great run at Long Beach to finish second. Cleaning up the track and working our way back to green. Stay with us on your home of open wheel racing. You rejoin us moments before the restart, and multiple times today we've seen these two guys going at it at the restart. Tony Kanaan and Ryan hunter -Ray. Seeing green one more time. Is this going to be Ryan hunter -Ray's day from pole to victory? We're into the second half of this oh. race, and Hunter Ray, massive lock up into turn one. He holds on to it, though. He's nice gotta, work. He's got to be so careful not to do what Graham Rahal did. He had to get off the pedal and make that first apex so he doesn't plow into the tires. Castro Nevis tries to go around the outside, further back in the pack. Good restart from Simona Di Silvestro and Oriol Servia. Yeah, Servia, wow. That black and green car right there. Remember, oh, here comes Marco Andretti oh, on the brakes. No. Hold on to it, hold on to it. He just gave Oriol Serbia a heart attack and has pulled off the move. And Serbia he? doesn't want to give it up. He hangs in there. There's a left-hander coming up. Serbia's got Serbia the position. Serbia has position. Nicely done, Serbia. Don't give up. Even though it's forceful driving, it was respectful driving because they were giving each other room. Well done. I don't know that it was very respectful by Marco Andretti. I think it was Serbia. <laughs> that was hopeful. A multi-year veteran seen smoke and red and blue in his mirror and said, whoa, baby. <laughs> they hung on to it. Oh, oh no. Four day Castro oh, Nevis. No. Hildebrand. That is not good. Where are they? They're Traffic on the racetrack, I guess. Kimball is into it as well. Oh, there's there's a Pagano. Pagano. How did this happen? The track will be blocked here. They're going to have to hustle these safety workers to get these guys going. Castro Nevis still running, we think. Elio Castro Nevis. Pagano's got a right front, uh, flat right front tire there. I wonder if that's what caused this melee in the first place. This has been a very forgettable race at home for Elio today. Full From course caution. onwards. They're going to try to get the pace car out here and drive as slow as possible so that they can get the track cleaned up before they get to that incident. Let's take you back and show you this. Marco Andretti on the inside. Now Serbia goes wide but doesn't give up. Gets hard on the power and knows that if I can stay side by side with Marco here, I've got position at the next corner and it works out. 
Third heads up driving. Vizo was trying to be opportunistic. Oh, oh right. Right. that's where it started. That was the incident. Yep. Looked like was that Bourdais getting into Pagano? Right behind them was when this chain reaction started. Engines fire. Castro Nevis the first one to get away. So knowing from history how much yellow we see on this track, if you were to take back time, would either of you in Takuma Sato's position have stayed out gambling on another yellow to help you? Well, I would have simply because by pitting there, it's, it's more than likely it's going to be difficult for him to get back to the front. Let's watch this replay. There's Bourdais getting into the back of Castroneves, who looked like he had already oh, had contact uh, with yeah. somebody else. And he couldn't turn. Couldn't yeah. turn the car. On board with Pagano. And here, Elio. Oh, he tries, he tries to go around the outside. And, and poor Pagano yeah. just <laughs> saw yeah. the, the road end in front of him. Nowhere to go. You can hear the contact up front, and then, of course, the contact from behind for Bourdais. Wow. J.R. Hildebrand simply had nowhere to go as the track was blocked. Now, to answer your question, Lee, about Takuma Sato, they had been burning a lot more fuel up until that point, knowing they couldn't make it. So, unfortunately, they put themselves in a very difficult position to where they couldn't stay out and take advantage of this. Now, what they might do here is bring Sato in for sure. a splash of fuel and see if they can kind of weasel their way back up on strategy. But they're, they've lost all their track position. Yeah. Not much they can do now. This is Elio Castro Nevis trying to make his way back. And he's got uh, a completely destroyed right rear. He better be careful not to do any damage to uh, his side pod or rear pod. And uh, unfortunately, the damage has been done. Look at that thing whip around. Really tears up the bodywork when that happens, but he's got to get back to pit lane. He's not going that fast. So he's got front wing damage. He's got right rear damage. Right from qualifying where he and teammate Will Power missed advancing to the second segment. He's been in a scrap with his teammate. He's hit his teammate. He has been turned by Scott Dixon. Poor Elio Castro Nevis has been in everything today. Surprised to see them not repair the wing, but maybe they're afraid that uh, the leaders are going to catch him, Jan, but their leaders are nowhere close. Why didn't they put a new front wing on that car? Good question. All right, if you're wondering what has happened today, if you've just turned on, maybe a little late, let's show you what has gone down here on the streets of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Lap seven, and this was Ana Beatriz, one of three Brazilian drivers in the race. The car simply came to a stop. And that brought out our first of what is now five yellows. Lap 10, great shot from the chopper here of Brazilian Tony Canaan making the move for the lead of the race on Ryan hunter at the end of the long back straight. The crowd thoroughly enjoyed seeing that. And this man here, Will Power, was carving his way through the field. He made up 12 positions at the time of this fire, which put him out of the race and has dropped him to 17th in points. And here's his teammate Elio Castro Nevis on a restart down into the turn one two complex. And watch what happens as he tries to avoid Simon Pagano. Boom, runs into Scott Dixon and gets turned. It has been a very eventful day to say the least for Castro Nevis. And then this, at the time of the race, this was the pass for the lead of the race. Takuma Sato on the inside of Ryan hunter -Ray. He's given us some exciting moments over the last two races, has Sato. And then Graham Rahal, check this out, locks up, runs wide into turn two, hits the tyre barrier, hits the wall. And that's put pay to his day. And then this most recent catalyst for caution, Collision between Bordet, Castro Nevis, Hildebrand had nowhere to go, nor did Pagano. Catalyst for collision, caution. Awesome. That, that was good. I, I, I can't believe that they haven't put a new wing on Castro Nevis. He's missing the entire left side end fence and upper element. And that was Takuma Sato just a few moments ago. Deciding to pit again and then run out. Maybe what they'll do is bring Elio in at the last second to do a splash and, and, and then do the wing at that time. But uh, a lot of chaos today. There you have it. Five cautions for 12 laps. There were five cautions last year as well. Kevin, what do you have? Takuma Sato just came in to top off. They weren't going to make it. Larry Foy just told him, even though they're back in something like 19th place, they've still got a chance, especially if a yellow comes and they move to the front, but they're going to try to make it to the rest the rest of the way without another stop. 
almost everybody else, barring a lot of yellow, is going to have to stop. So they've still got a chance to compete for the win. Time for a quick commercial break, and we'll come back hopefully to see the green flag fly in Sao Paulo. We're back in Brazil as we're working our way towards green to restart this race. Five yellow periods. And a quick reminder to download IndyCar 13 app, simply call Star Star Indy or search the App Store or Google Play only from Verizon to stay in touch with the IZOD IndyCar series. Now, of course, we mentioned at the top of the show that this is the last street slash road course race before we go to ovals. And of course, the big one, the Indianapolis 500. And we've got poll day qualifying coming up for you on May 18th. That's from 11 till 2.30. We take a quick break and then we'll be back for the poll day shootout at 4.30 to 6.30. Bump day, we've got six and a half hours of coverage for you on the 19th. Carb day as well. And then, of course, with our friends at ABC, the 97th running of the Indianapolis 500. We've been singing the praises of Oriol Servia, and this is a good story, Robin. Well, Dennis Reinbold told us a couple of weeks ago they don't have enough money to continue after Indy this year. They finished fourth last year with Servia and Indy. That is one of the good little, little one-car teams in the series. They're, they're, you know, you know, they're partners with Panther. But the most important thing is Servia has always been one of those underdog guys that something bad always happens to him. And here he is having another good season. He's going to lose his ride. So I said to Dennis, what if you guys have a good run at Indy? Is there a chance maybe you could stay on, on board and, and finish the season? He said, yeah, I think if we could do good at Indy, maybe somebody will take an interest in him. And right now, we're running in the top five here. Robin, certainly doesn't hurt. Serbia's got a chance to win today. And if he did that, there's no way Dennis Reinbold's going to stop. <laughs> you're saying? You're <laughs> well, he just keeps getting better at every race. Serbia's 17th, 15th, 6th. So maybe this might be a podium. Now, the reason these cars are driving through, they're receiving a penalty. Pagno, Castro Neves, and Bourdais entered a closed pit, so they've been told they have to drive through. We talked about Elio Castro Neves' tough day. Simon Pagano has endured a very rough weekend as well. The Sunoco Rookie of the Year last year. There hasn't been a whole lot of sun shining on him. I can tell you who's watching this race and watching Pagano and Bourdais with, with and every lap makes him nervous is Buddy Rice, the 2004 Indy winner, because he's going to drive the third car for Sam Smith Motorsports if they don't destroy any more cars, and they've had a rough weekend. Buddy Lazier and his dad, Bob, bought a chassis. He hadn't been in the race for a few years. They're going to try and make it. Brian Clausen, the USAC champion, he got to run last year at Indy. He's close to having enough money. He's trying to work with Jimmy Vassar. And Jay Howard's got some money, who, and he might end up with a ride, too. So we might have three or four guys trying to bump their way in. And if you read that graphic correctly, yes, your eyes weren't deceiving you. Townsend Bell, our NBC sports analyst, Townsend Bell, is in the Indy 500 this year. Mate, we didn't get a chance to talk more about it. You, you must be thrilled. Oh, you know, I have been burning the, uh, the candle at both ends time-wise to get this deal lined up, working hard, but I'm so thrilled to be back with Panther, Sunoco, the Turbo Movie, all the partners. But right now, it's about this restart. Let's see what happens. TK versus Hunter Ray. Remember, we've seen it so many times before. Hunter Ray had a massive lockup the time previous. Can he keep it smooth? You see from above, he gets a good start. Kanan on the outside, Frankini and Serbia down into turn one. A oh. lot smoother that time. Serbia tries to keep Marco Andretti at bay. Andretti gets an inside run. Look at the yellow and blue car. Marco is up to fourth. Good, strong, pushing hard. And he and Serbia still going at it. This time, the move paid off. Marco Andretti has made the best start to a championship in his IndyCar career, and he's fourth. And now he's vying for a podium. He's not only fourth in the race, he's fourth in the championship. Excellent wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing between Marco and Servia. They've gone side-by-side -side on more than one occasion. No contact so far. Marco getting the advantage there, but Servia is looking to come right back. And Kyle Moyer just told Marco, you can push these next eight laps. We're going to see him come in and pit around 52. Keep in mind, he's got four laps in hand to the four that were in front of him on this restart. They came in uh, 24 laps ago, Marco 20 laps ago. So he's got a little bit more fuel on board right now. Marco Andretti, as we see Justin Wilson make a move on Simona Di Silvestre and Hinchcliffe's lining up a move. So too Tony Canaan. Right at the front. Can he do it on the outside? It's the long way around. Hunter Ray will hold position. Oh, it's the it long way lead. around, but he's on the, the more rubbered oh, oh. inside of the track. He does the over-under. The crowd is going to be going crazy. Listen, folks, listen. <laughs> that 
is electrifying. Andretti is up to third. He's got by Dario Franchitti, and now he's pushing after his Andretti uh, Autosport teammate. Oh, here comes Marco. Marco's right after Hunter Ray. Look at this inside. This is where he tried to make the move a little earlier. Right alongside Ryan Hunter Ray. Marco Andretti is Look up to second. Look at Serbia seconds. getting around Franchitti, following in order. Here they come. Awesome. This is good. Marco Andretti, who learned so much from the man that he's chasing and also the guy who passed Dario Franchini. Quick update from Kevin. Kevin. It's a flat tire. Tire going down for Hunter Ray. Michael Andretti told him to come in. Was Remember, there a little nip from Canaan? Did Canaan been. just glance him? Remember, these cars run tire oh, yeah, pressure monitoring centers and they send that data back to the pits in real time so the engineers know if a tire is coming down. Look at Marco crawling up on Canaan here. Is Oriol Serbia to make a fairly straightforward Marco move to the inside. Race for the lead, look at this. Andretti on the inside on a driver he learned so much from in his early days in his father's team. Takes the lead for the first time in this race. That is huge for Marco because as Kevin pointed out, he's got four laps more fuel than most of these guys. If he can stretch a little bit of lead and be the last one to stop, it's going to be an advantage. He said before this race even began, I started 10th, I wanted to be in the Firestone Fast 6, it doesn't matter, I know we can get a podium, I've got a good race car. And he's showing us just how good it is. 29 laps to go, one more stop to go, and speaking of a stop, here comes Hunter Ray, this is forced. Tell us more, Kev. Hunter Ray coming down for the unscheduled stop earlier than that, what they wanted to do. So they were going to have to really save from here out to get home is my best guess. We'll wait and see which tire it's going to be. Hunter Ray is still making his way down pit road. Now he hits his marks. They will change all four tires, obviously. And he's got to set a sticker red to go for the last stint. So mixed feelings for Michael Andretti. His lead driver was forced to come in and stop. Meanwhile, his son leads the race. Here comes Dario Franchitti on the push to pass button, gets inside Tony Kanaan in the brakes. On the straight, actually. So long, I was waiting for them to hit the brakes. <laughs> so Oriol Servia up to second, oh, Franchitti up to third. EJ Viso, Andretti Autosport is everywhere right now. What a fantastic run for Oriol Servia. He's got uh, an, an uncertain future. He knows things are on the line after Indianapolis. This is his last, potentially his last street course race of this season to make magic happen, and he's driving like a champ right now. As Robin mentioned earlier, remember how well he did at the Indy 500 last year with that fourth place finish. This could just be perfect timing Look for the him. Spaniard. Look at him, he's got a run here on Marco. And the reason he's there in Townsend, you pointed out, is that he was smart. He drove smartly. He gave room to Marco Andretti instead of fighting to the death and having contact. They raced each other wheel to wheel, and discretion was a better part of ours. Sure, he lost a little track position, but he's there now to fight in second. There's really nobody cleaner to race, this, race with in this series than Oriol Servi. I'm sure he was probably a little frustrated at the Raging Bulls, you know, tire smoking <laughs> coming through. Uh, but that's the way Marco drives, and Marco's really cleaned up, uh, you know, his program a lot in the last few years, and he's driving exceptionally well today. Man who's led so many laps in this race, Ryan Hunter Ray, back up to speed with 28 to go. Now, he could still be alive. He'll go into super, super fuel-safe mode and hope for yellow. If there is caution, that will help Ryan Hunter Ray, but he'll, he's going to need some help in that regard. I figure he needs about 10 laps of yellow, something like uh, that. Not so. quite that many, but he, he needs some. EJ Viso on Canaan. This has been a vastly improved drive from EJ Viso. The Venezuelan got his career high qualifying in second, saw that front row for the very first time in his IndyCar career, and now he's in fourth place. Look at the mix up back there with James Jakes making moves on Scott Dixon. We need to leave the streets of Sao Paulo momentarily. We are going non-stop, but we'll see you back in a moment. Back in Brazil, as you see EJ Viso try and execute a move on Dario Franchitti. It was late. And just tucked in behind the Scotsman. Our live coverage continues here on the NBC Sports Network. 25 laps to go to determine if we're going to have a fourth different winner from the first four rounds.
The pit window is now open, so any of this group, if they so choose, could duck onto pit road knowing it's their last stop. But I think you'd want to stay out a bit longer. Servia decides to hit pit road. Second place, Oriel Servia. This has been a spirited run. Look at, the, look at that car. There is not a mark on that car, and nobody has had more wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing with that guy. With years of experience in these things, and, and a certain natural ability is spatial awareness, the ability to know when cars are around you and where they are. And nobody does that better fuel. than Oriel. One of the keys is that fuel probe. It got engaged quite quickly. Not bad. Now, Critical Yon is seconds. his outlap. What yep. he does from the end of pit lane speed on that outlap on cold tires will totally determine what happens if this stays green. First time Marco Andretti has led a race this year, and he's comfortable up front. Here's his oh, teammate, Kanan James slows. Kanan is in trouble. And he is a long ways from pit road right there. Still running. The hometown hero is slowing, is crawling. The man who has electrified this crowd today is out of the running for victory. Alex Tagliani side by side with Newgarden there in the hairpin. Tagliani up to ninth place, eighth place now. And this is Tony Kanaan, an agonizing view. weekend that showed so much promise and now what they'll do is anyone who might be thinking about stopping which is most of the leaders they'll duck in now because if it goes full course caution that's not what they want and will we see a caution well, unlikely they'll still be able assuming it's not full course caution pits closed they could still race to the pits but you want to get in here to be sure they don't close the pits for some reason you want to get in and out while it's still green to keep your position. Frankitti, Viso, Wilson, Di Silvestro, Tagliani, Kimball, Castro Nevis, Bordet, and Ed Carpenter all pitted. We are under caution for the sixth time today. But the key is full course caution pits open. So you're still allowed to race back there. So now we'll know that all the rest of the group, if they haven't stopped already, is going to hit pit road. And look at Tony. And he's heartbroken. Kevin. Second week in a row, a critical pit miscue for uh, Dario Franchitti's target Chip Ganassi team. Left rear this time. It wasn't uh, something that's going to ruin the race, but they lost at least a spot or two. I know EJ Viso got out in front of them, so another rare problem for the Ganassi team. You see in Ryan Hunter Ray, this will help Ryan Hunter Ray. This is what he's been tootling around in the back, trying to save fuel. They're all still racing, trying to get back to pit road because they do not have, they have to slow when they go by the incident, but then they can get back on it. And boy, Ryan Hunter Ray is hoping as Marco Andretti finishes hits pit work that Viso keeps his speed up. Andretti and Hinchcliffe, the two Andretti Autosport teammates were on the same strategy. Just a quick thanks to Kevin for that update on, on uh, Ganassi's Dario Franchitti as well. The pictures are coming to us via the host broadcaster. And look, Larry Foyt screaming on the radio at Takuma Sato. So this is interesting with 23 to go. Still so much to play out here. At a race that has been dominated all three years by Willpower. <laughs> well, you're allowed to race until just the pit exit, that white line. I think Viso took that a little later, could don't you think? <laughs> could, be, could, could be a blend line issue there. They'll sort it out when we come back. We'll follow that story and many more as we regroup and work our way back to green. Stay with us. Fourth year in a row for the IZOD IndyCar Series on the streets of Sao Paulo, Brazil for the Sao Paulo Indy 300. And this is just a gut-wrenching image for Brazilian IndyCar fans and Tony Kanaan fans. His KV racing machine stranded, needing help back as he just came to a halt. And we will get an update on that story to tell you what the situation is with Tony Kanaan. So this is interesting. We've got J.R. Hildebrand on pole for the restart and Graham Rahal with a repaired but he's down laps. IndyCar is going to be down laps. He's yeah, down but he's, laps. He's so. going to be up front, but there's nowhere for these guys to hide, Jan. Here's the restart. <laughs> Watch for the teammates to go at it. Hinchcliffe and Andretti. 
Watch the green car and the blue and red car on the second row at the restart. Andretti's got the inside run. He's right behind Hildebrand. Ray Hall's on the outside. But look at they Sato. Sato looking for his second consecutive win. Gets Marco on the restart. And Hinchcliffe was stronger there. He tucked into third. There he goes. Sato, nice work. Hildebrand leads the pack as they stretch their legs on this restart after six yellow flags here today. Full course cautions. He leads the pack, but he does not have enough fuel unless there was significant yellow to get him to the end. So he's got a Graham Rahal trying to make laps back behind yeah. him. This is, this is really interesting how this all jumbled the order. Graham's trying to make laps, but he's four laps yeah. down. He is yeah. not a factor in this. JR yeah. last pitted 12 laps ago. Shows you how long he's been out there in comparison to the guys that we just saw cycle through. So James Hinchcliffe is effectively the first car. Sorry, Marco Andretti. Let's see here. No, Sporting. Hinchcliffe. Yeah. He's done very well is Joseph Newgarden as well. He last pitted on lap 53, and he is up there running with them in fifth place. Inside move, Sato on Hinchcliffe. The ABC Supplies car is there. Nice work. James Jakes trying to go on the outside of Newgarden, the battle for fifth place. James Jakes, too, last pitted on lap 53. So these guys are seriously in the mix. Andretti on his teammate, down into turn one. Can Marco Whoa. pull that off? No is the answer. Hinch holds onto it. So, look at Sato in third. Just still riding high from that win in Long Beach. Look at these two guys battling. Technically, Sato is actually in second place with Hildebrand, who's leading. Definitely going to have to make one more stop, spot. So right now, Takuma Sato, the man leading on strategy. And Lee, you were saying, well, would you have second guessed? Oh, oh Jakes just went in a strong position. The Acorn Stairlifts car is crunched. And man. Justin Wilson in the wall. Got to think there was contact between those two. No, maybe not. Wilson was back. Maybe that's a separate Now, this incident. helps the cause for Hildebrand. Yeah, if, but he needs a lot of help. But do you, I mean, this is a great chance. Do you, do you stay out there? Would you I not th just I stay out do. and I roll the you, dice? If you, if you pit now, uh, sure, you, you pit under yellow to get your fuel, but you're at the back of the pack. I and, say you roll the position. dice. Why not? It could be a lot more caution to go. He needs to make up another five laps of green, but... That's possible. And listen, uh, two years ago at the Indy 500, they figured out how to make fuel last a long time and uh, almost came away with the win, finished second. But also, I was just starting to say to Lee, you asked about, well, what about that strategy for Sato dropping all the way to the back? It just shows there are more than one way, there's, there is more than one way to skin a cat as far as what you want to do for strategy. Now Sato's right in a great position. Kevin, what do you have? Scott Dixon was running in the top 10 before those last round of pit stops, but he had to take a second stop. Earlier, he had taken some contact when Elio Castroneves spun. J.R. Hildebrand is coming in now as we speak, but he had to make a, a nose change. So Dixon is all the way back uh, up to 19th now. So with Hildebrand pitting, everything opens up for Takuma Sato. Here, who was the race leader in the National Guard and the racing Chevy, J.R. Hildebrand leaves. And yes, we are at a new record for cautions in Brazil. It was six, now this is full yellow number seven. See you in a moment. Our new race leader and our most recent race winner. He stays where he is, he rockets to the top of this IZOD IndyCar Series Championship. Seven seasons and 91 Formula One Grand Prix. He never got to the top step of a podium in Formula One. He did get to the podium, but Takuma Sato is now an IZOD IndyCar Series race winner as of two weeks ago. And he is the man of the moment for the seven-time champion and legend, AJ Foyt. When people question that partnership and that hiring and that decision, they're eating their words now, Robin. Well, I think Foyt said, I want somebody that's going to go for it. And well, that's his strategy job done but I think the most important thing is is we're gonna make AJ stay at home until the kid doesn't lose the race <laughs> Kevin tell us more about Joseph Newgarden well he's uh, running in third position the same fuel strategy as the leaders Sato Hinchcliffe Newgarden Andretti and Pagano also on that same strategy but Newgarden has been told 
All right, great job so far, but we are going to think about points a little bit. Don't go for everything. Uh, just make sure you're a little bit conservative here. They're looking for a solid result for New Garden. One other thing, I'm not sure if we've had full confirmation on this. Tony Kanaan did run out of fuel. I talked with Jimmy Vassar. Wow. What Vassar told Kanaan after they came in and towed in was, all right, let's look for a new goal. Let's get the fastest lap of the race, and they told him that number. If I'm the Joseph Newgarden and the team's telling me to be conservative, <laughs> I'm looking in my mirrors and saying, yeah. are you kidding me? I've got Marco Andretti, Simon Pagino, Ryan hunter Oriol Servia, and the deepest break zones of any track in the championship. Yeah. What the heck am I supposed to do? Just give up? I'll get killed. And I've never won a race. Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course I'm going to go for and it. And my best finish is, I think, ninth, right? Yeah. Got that at Barber. Got that at Barber yeah. this year. And his big, his big drive this year for the 22-year-old has been, hey, we're fast. We know that we can do it. I've had good performances, but I've never converted it to a really decent result. And that's what I want to do this year. I want to get good results. I want to score points. I want to be a contender. Well, all of a sudden, Joseph Newgarden is a contender here in Brazil. We'll be back to watch him race and see if Takuma Sato can go back-to-back -back wins. We're back just in time for the restart with two winners in 2013 on the front row to see this green flag first. James Hinchcliffe in the green car up against Takuma Sato, but it's the Japanese driver who gets the jump. Newgarden's in there mixing it up with him and gets second. Pushes through Joseph Newgarden, great restart. Clear. All clean through turns one and two. Clearly ignoring the advice from the team to be conservative. Joseph Newgarden can see one more car and then clear sailing. He is going for it. Let's see what happens oh, here. Oh, he's still after it. Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing is vying for the win in this race. And look at this. Behind him, Simon Pagino goes around Hinch on the outside. Pagano's had such a hard day, such a tough race, but he's hanging tough, he's hanging in there. Now Newgarden looked very racy there, but Sato defended on the push to pass button. Newgarden has four left, Sato showing three, they're about to come to that long, long straightaway. And the top three are all Hondas, so what a shift. We saw all Chevrolets at the front now, it's Honda, one, two, three, we'll see how they shake out. Oh, look at the exit that Newgarden got there with Sato. Sato on the button again, he's, he's using the button defensively. Newgarden holding off on using push to pass. Simon Pagano has shown that these cautions can really help you. He has been to pit road six times today and he's running third. And he got a drive through penalty. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. What a day for the Frenchman. What a day. He's been outshone by his rookie teammate as far as speed and results, but the rookie of the year from last year is coming back strong. Wow, Joseph really thought about it. Sato, Newgarden, Pagano, Hinchcliffe, Serbia, Andretti, Hunter Ray, Frank Kitty, Vizo. And you know, Townsend, the best way to stay out of trouble, I think, is always to push. I think when the team tells you to be conservative, you do ignore it because you want to push. It keeps your focus, and Newgarden's thinking, I'm going to get him. I don't think there's any way to, to keep a 21-year-old on the brink of winning his first IndyCar race to not push. But the key, I think, is just keep doing what you've been doing that got you to this point yeah. in the race. Agreed. You know, Joseph Newgarden felt really good coming into this race, despite where he was starting. All he was second quickest in the first practice yesterday morning. Then they had to make the engine change, really didn't get a second practice. Had to start in the back, but he said the morning warm-up went great. I really think we could race our way to the front, and they've used some strategy, but they've also used some flat-out speed. Takuma Sato using one more push to pass. I think that was maybe unnecessary, Jan. He had a nice gap onto the back straight. This leaves him with only one more push to pass. New Garden still has four. You can see the way that it turns green on the upper right there. And boy, I'm not sure you want to get to the end of the race without a way of defense. And I agree with you. I'm not sure he needed it on that back straight. Behind New Garden, Pagano with two left. Hinchcliffe with five. Servia with five. Joseph Newgarden, you may have seen that graphic, with the fastest lap of the race. Pagano breathing down his neck. Hinchcliffe, our season opener winner, in fourth place and not out of it. Servia vying for a top five. That's a real boost for him and his team. 14 laps to go. Joseph Newgarden had an opportunity to be on the podium in the past. It was Toronto, I believe, and it wasn't Simon Pagano who had contact with him, and he is now in his mirror. Simon Pagano making up for a very difficult start to the season so far. He's got a podium position right now, but he's pushing for more. Marco Andretti. 
led quite a few laps earlier in this race and he maintains his sixth position. Look at that left rear bumper for Pagano. You know, I got a, a text, an email actually from the Randy Bernard, the former IndyCar CEO, after I was giving those things a hard time at Long Beach. He said, don't forget Townsend, those reduce aerodynamic drag help pick up straightaway speed. Jan, you and I were talking about that with 195 miles an hour on the straightaway. Maybe those things actually do make it a little more slippery in a straight line. They do. We did check with Delara, and although they didn't run it in the wind tunnel, I say it is designed to give them that higher speed. And as you said, we've seen 193 miles an hour here. So the engine manufacturers are definitely picking up speed this year. What a day it's been for Simon Pagano so far, starting all the way from the back. And a, an interesting weekend for Rob Edwards, his strategist, the team manager. He graduated with an MBA from the Kelly School of Business from Indiana University yesterday. Obviously, he didn't make commencement. He was a little bit busy. He'd also hoped to run his first mini marathon in Indianapolis, signed up before he really took a look at the Indy car, car schedule, thought, eh, I'd probably better go and do the day job. They were busy yesterday. Pagano with a heavy crash. Voltier made contact three different times. But for Pagano, they've got a chance to make it all into a very positive weekend. Still in the chase here, running third in the final stages. So much of this sport is all about teamwork and trust, and that's what Simon Pagano has in Rob Edwards. Rob has been in his ear, has been his race engineer since way back in the Atlantic days. They have a terrific relationship, and it's the kind of words that Rob Edwards uses, hang in it, we're still in this. If there's another caution, he was 24th on the opening lap. He's now third, but maybe only for another second or two. Here comes the mayor of Hinchtown. Hinchcliffe burning a turbo push to pass button on that back straightaway. Gets side by side with Pagano. They'll stay side by side on the main straight. Drag race. Sato leads. New Garden second. Is Hinchcliffe going to run it in deep on the brakes? No, Pagano won't allow him to. 12 laps left. No fuel safe mode there. You can hear him go from full throttle straight to the brakes. These guys are pounding it out as hard as they can. Joseph Newgarden, when he was young, he's still very young at 22, <laughs> when he was younger, used to watch the man he's chasing compete in the Formula One World Championship. Now he's going to go wheel to wheel with him for the win. If I'm watching closely, I love the composure of New Garden's car vertically over the bumps, Jan. All these great close-up shots really tell me that car is working extremely well vertically over the bumps, and he still has four push to passes left. Larry Foyt looking on. You mentioned how good the car is across the bumps. Joseph Newgarden, it was funny, he came to the first media day, and he says, I'm so excited. We go, why? He says, we've had our car on the shaker. We, hate, we did that piece earlier. That is when they take the car and they tune up the dampers, and he said, I think our car is going to be so much better, and you said, you see visibly, it's improved. Kevin? There are a couple of guys whose day is going a lot better than they feared it would after the morning warm-up. Takuma Sato was cautiously optimistic, but they couldn't find the grip and the balance in qualifying. They expected more yesterday. Remember, it's the first time they weren't quick enough for the Fast Six. And James Hinchcliffe said the morning warm-up was very educational, and they were going in a little bit blind. Even though he had a great starting position in fifth, uh, they were going to make some more changes. So I would think that Hinch feels pretty good to be running in the fourth position right now and still have a chance. Pounding Simon Pagano. It's a Honda 1, 2, 3 at the moment. And this is the kind of run that the Canadian wanted. In the green car, the GoDaddy and Dreddy Autosport Chevrolet, after winning the opening race, contact in the next two took him out. And he went from first in the championship to 10th in a matter of two races. Now he's back. Oriol Servia on the push to pass right now, coming from a pretty decent gap back, but look at him oh. close up there. Having a look on Hinch, decides to tuck back in. Dario Franchini in the background, look for that black car. He's starting to hound Marco Andretti for sixth. Viso is still in seventh. The yellow car you can see at the back there, that's Hunter Ray in ninth and Simona Di Silvestro in 10th. Man, I love the way this is laying out for Newgarden here. He is closing the gap big time on Sato. He's been the most conservative on the push to pass of the front three runners. 
And if he can stay close onto that long, long back straightaway, he'll have a chance. Joseph Newgarden is one of many young American drivers who had his eyes on Formula One. He went and he competed in some junior formula. Didn't quite go the way he wanted. He returned to the US and he won the Firestone Indy Lights Championship a couple of years ago. Rookie season in IndyCar last year. Showed his speed, but didn't convert it. His best is not even a top five. His best is one top 10. And now he's going for a podium, maybe a win. And Sato is trying to hang on with these tires. What a story this would be and what a testament to Firestone. We saw him come in and just top off uh, at one point his final pit stop. They didn't change tires either. So he's been on this same set of alternate red uh, tires since lap 37. Newgarden is awfully close at the end of that back straightaway without even having to touch push to pass. I think he is looking very, very good here. And he's probably just biding his time waiting for the moment to pounce. Townsend, here's the other thing. Sarah Fisher and Wink Cartman have, have a new shop on Main Street and Speedway. They've never had a podium. They, I mean, you know, this is going to be such a, I mean, she had a win with Ed Carpenter, but this team and this young guy, Newgarden, who's so excited, he doesn't need any Red Bull to get excited about chasing down the leader. Trust me, he's, you, you guys know how he is. This would be such a great story for the American Open Wheel Series. And they've got a very smart race engineer in Nathan O'Rourke, I think is his last name, yes. who was a data guy on a team that I drove for about five years ago, and all of a sudden he's one of the most sought after engineers in the paddock. They just work away at it methodically. Joseph, in his off season, was very focused on his fitness, not worrying about, I need a vacation here, I need a vacation there. I'm determined on being an IndyCar Series race winner. And it's starting to pay off here with less than 10 laps to go. Now, Jan, we're watching Hunter Ray slip back through the field. Is that because he's saving fuel? I would have thought that he would have been hanging back earlier on. Well, he is obviously five laps in arrears of everyone he's racing with from when he pitted. But I thought when he was at the back, they would have saved enough to help him. And that most likely is the case. Oh, here we go. For Simon third Pagano. place. And Hinchcliffe, we saw Hinchcliffe take this wide oh. line earlier. Look at this. Outside move. Hinchcliffe pulls it off. So the mayor of Hinchtown is on the podium. Provisionally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd like that as well. So now we'll see if Simon Pagano can respond and is Takuma Sato safe in first? Or is he just uh, hoping to hold Joseph Newgarden off? How aggressive can young Joseph be? During that, we saw Newgarden burn one of his push to passes. He has three left to Sato's one. This season of surprise, Townsend, as you tagged it earlier in the show, the weekend is continuing to surprise. This is the corner where Newgarden has to stay close. Sato seems a little quicker through there each time. Let's see if Newgarden pushes the button, not this time. Pagano in the background is in danger of losing another spot. Here comes Marco Andretti. Andretti is fifth, wanting that fourth place spot. Stretching their legs again. This is good. There's so many positives to take away from today. Sato showing that Long Beach was no fluke whatsoever. An inspired run from Newgarden. Hinchcliffe returning to form. Andretti remaining consistent. And there's Mike O'Gara calling the shots for Joseph Newgarden, former Ganassi employee. Newgarden oh, really now. starting to push now. The back end starting to slide around as those tires start to wear oh, out. He's but he's going to the outside. Move. And he's on the button. For the lead of the race, Joseph Newgarden up against Takuma Sato. He can't do it right there. Tough place Sato's to make a got pass. The preferred line. Tough place to make a pass, but he's got closer now. He's just got to hang in there and he'll get it on the back straight. He's only got two push to passes left. He's ratcheting up the pressure on Takuma Sato. We've seen some really good close racing today, sometimes for the lead, sometimes for a top five. This is for the win of the motor race. Right-hander onto the long back straightaway. It seems like every time Sato gets a gap there leading onto that back straight, and that leads to Newgarden saying, I might not want to use the push to pass at this point, but it's the longest stretch for him. 
to take advantage of it. Look at the way Hinchcliffe is closing in from behind. So he's he's knowing that this is the time, obviously, when there's only seven laps to go. You know it's getting close, and Sato locks up. Feeling the pressure, pushing it deep into that final turn. Newgarden just shadowing it, filling his mirrors with that Sarah Fisher Hartman racing car. Six to go. Six to go before we may have a third first time winner in four races. Hinchcliffe has been able to gap his teammate. His teammate Marco Andretti did get Simon Pagano for fourth. Servia sixth, Fran Kitty seventh, Fizo, Di Silvestro and Charlie Kimball up into the top ten with the falling Ryan hunter -Aid. Six laps to go and I'm starting to see signs of rear tire wear really coming to effect. You're trying to get a good, clean, hard exit off all of these corners. You're asking a lot of the rear tires the harder you push. The harder you push, the more you wear out the tires, the more difficult it becomes to not make a mistake. And there's turn 10. That's the, as you keep saying, Townsend, that is the key corner if you're going to get yourself in position. And I think Newgarden needs to push the button on that straightaway. Maybe not on this run, but that's where I think he's going to get it done. Takuma Sato has one push to pass left, Joseph Newgarden one, James Hinchcliffe in third has three as Newgarden pulls out of the draft. Let's check this time margin. Just a short while ago it was two seconds between Sato and Hinchcliffe, it's down to 1.6 seconds. That GoDaddy machine is on the run. The GoDaddy car is the fastest car on the track right now. Hinchcliffe just did a 21.4 to Sato's 21.6. The guys in third and fourth ran exactly the same strategy. The Andretti teammates pitted the same amount of time on the same laps, and they're running a very strong third and fourth. But is that going to convert to a victory for James Hinchcliffe for the second time this year? Has he got enough laps? Four and a half to go, and he's got to get past the charging young Joseph Newgarden first. Newgarden's going to see that bright green car in the mirrors and think to himself, Maybe I need to make it happen now if it's going to happen at all before Hinchcliffe is all over me. This man here running second from Nashville, Tennessee, the 22-year-old American started dead last and has worked his way methodically through this field, working with guys like Mike O'Gara we just saw on screen. Come on, he's on here the button go. now. He is on the button. I think this could be the run where he can get really close to Sato. Is this going to be the move that Joseph Newgarden will remember for his whole career? Tries to get past Tato. Sato, Sato tries to block. Wow, one side to the other. Now, crossover. There you go. Crossover. What, what does race control think about that? Now he tries the over and under, can't do it. Now he's in the slipstream of Sato, down to one. They each have one push to pass left. Newgarden's going to be pretty fired up, I think, about that little dodge Sato gave him. This is good driving and all the while, while they're fighting, who's arrived on the scene? The mayor of Hinchtown is here. He may just back off and wait for the collision. That's the closest New Garden's been to passing Sato. He needs to be patient, I believe, until he gets to that section again. But he's got Hinchcliffe coming fast. And remember the difference, and it's something that Joseph Newgarden doesn't know in his IndyCar career, that James Hinchcliffe and Takuma Sato have learned this year. What is it like to win an IndyCar race? It changes your confidence level. It changes your belief. They've got it. He doesn't. He was so fast last year, Joseph Newgarden. Won a bunch of races in Indy Lights. Quick his rookie year. Never even produced a top 10 finish. And he's right here, right now. Less than four laps to run. Hinchcliffe's on the button. He had one more to burn. Oh, oh he's boy. got great run on Newgarden. This could put an end to Joseph Newgarden's run. Sato has skipped away, and Hinchcliffe is making the move on Joseph Newgarden for second. Go Daddy Car goes to second. Very smooth. Did it with that push to pass in the draft. And now Newgarden's fight has become increasingly tougher. And you see Newgarden now fighting for traction off that final corner as the rear tires light up under power. Look further back at uh, Pagano versus Simona. Now word from race control is that Bo Barfield and his staff have reviewed the Sato move involving Hinchcliffe's attempted pass and no further action. This was it. So he stays, we watch, watch the dotted Sato. line. Watch Sato, I oh. don't know about that. I don't know if race control saw that angle. So playing tough, 
it might not mean anything in the end if James Hinchcliffe continues to surge the way he is. Jan Bikas, if that's not blocking, I don't know what is. <laughs> Well, the whole definition is moving in reaction to, and the moment that you saw New Garden move, I think I saw an additional move uh, by Sato, and by the rules, moving in reaction to is a penalty. I think everybody at home saw the same thing. Now, what New Garden did is he faked to the outside, right. and then he dodged in. Here comes Hinch for the lead of the race. Hinch clips on the push to pass. Goes to oh, the Sato. Sato, Sato, he does, does it, it again. again. And he moves back again. Playing tough with the mayor of Hinchtown. Hinch may have the momentum though. And Hinch is playing tough right back, fading over to him on the straightaway, saying, hey buddy, back off, I'm coming through. But Sato's having none of that. What will race wow. control have to say about that? Sato is out of push to passes with three laps to go. Hinch has one, Newgarden has one. All right, two laps left. Who's gonna win it? What do you think at home? Who do you like? It's anyone's guess. Hinchcliffe has the upper hand with one more push to pass. Young Joseph has one left as well. Marco Andretti has one left hanging back there in fourth. And Oriol Servia for Panther Dreyer Reinbold is in the top five. What a battle this is going to be to the finish. Look at Hinch is all over Sato again. Race control for sure has to be reviewing that incident. And we're getting the word they are reviewing it right now. We'll let you know as soon as we know. Marco Andretti's arrived on the scene with one and a half laps left to run. Boy, Andretti Autosport has been strong this year. Two wins. And Marco in the top wow. four in the championship. His hands moving there. He was fighting that thing off of turn 10. No attack, no glory. Job done. <laughs> He's Almost. holding on to it for the final lap. James Hinchcliffe now tries to pull out of the draft and just hassle, just annoy, just pressure to Kumasato. But oh, Newgarden New goes Garden. to the inside. Joseph Newgarden to the inside. It was three wide at one point. And it could be three wide coming to turn one. He moves up into second place. The white flag out one to go. Hinchcliffe responds. Hinch comes back to second. Wow, Sato maintains his lead. Hinchcliffe, Newgarden and Marco Andretti vying for his first podium of the year. This has been brilliant. These final 22 to 20 laps have been spectacular. Marco Andretti pops on Newgarden now on the outside. Oh, he got Easily him. Easily done. That was an easy one. He used his push to pass. So Hinchcliffe has one left. Newgarden has one left. That's of the top four guys. And in the background is looming Oriol Serbia. This is far from done. And remember, the last person to get their first and second wins back to back was AJ Armendinger back in 2006. Is Sato going to repeat history or is this going to be Hitchcliffe's second win? It's all to play for on this final lap. And, and everybody's, on it. everybody's burning their button. Hitch is on the button. He's got oh, the inside. Sato says no again. Chops him again. Hinchcliffe. Did he do it early enough for Hinch to have a run? Newgarden's out of the draft. Sato hands on to it. Newgarden on the inside of Andretti. And on the inside, Hinch oh. is nearly over and under. Oh, he is in the mayor's office. James Hinchcliffe runs it to the line. Will he have enough? And he wins his second one. Servia the fourth. On the final corner, on the final lap, James Hinchcliffe is a winner again. How about that? He says, you may block me, but I've outmaneuvered you. Yeah, what about that? And you can see how much that means to Hinchcliffe. A win, two non-finishes, and another win. What a season for the mayor of Hinchtown. That's some of the best IndyCar racing I've seen Look in at a Craig while. Look at Craig Hanson, he's engineer on the pit awesome. wall. He's laughing, saying, can you believe that? <laughs> That is all driver at that point. There's nothing your race engineer can do for you. Great, great job. Let's relive that pass and that moment. There was so much going on in that final turn. Sato made life hard for him, and then they come into the braking zone. Talk us through. Hinch goes to the outside. Takuma's going to break as late as he can. Gets in a little deep. The back end steps out. Hinch is able to duck to the inside, do the over-under, the crossover, and just comes flying out of that corner. And meantime, Servia passes Newgarden, almost comes home third. Servia ends up fourth.
And in the background, what we didn't see was Marco Andretti getting third, his first podium of the year. Servia fourth, Newgarden fifth. How about that finish? That was fantastic. <laughs> and the GoDaddy team within the Andretti Autosport organization, wow, three of the four races won by that team. It is celebration time. Celebration time for James Hinchcliffe. The 26-year-old Canadian is now a two-time winner, and this is the incredibly savvy way he did it. You see Sato get squirrely on the brakes, and Hinch is just in the perfect position to duck right underneath him and get a big squirt off the last corner. Sato had already used all of his push to pass. He knew he had to be aggressive in the brakes and just slid wide, and wow, picture perfect for Hinchcliffe. That was amazing. So a win, two non-finishers, and another win. And I have to make this special mention. The last time a driver led only the last lap of a race, the late Dan Weldon at the Indy 500 in 2011. It's all smiles for James Hinchcliffe and Andretti Autosport. And the word from race control, no action taken on Takuma Sato. Just hard racing. I'll tell you what, boys, that sets the tone for what the racing's gonna be like the rest of the season. And it's gonna be it's gonna be it's a gonna knife fight. If that's if that's <laughs> if that's cool, fine, game on. <laughs> Hey, he told us earlier in the broadcast, as Kevin said, he's popular in Brazil. Wow. <laughs> I'm looking forward to watching the replay of this one. We may have never had a better street course race than today. So many things to talk about, and we'll go back to the battle in the final few last, but let's start with turn 11. Last turn winning it on a street course. I mean, uh, th there's no cool way to win a race in the last corner of the last lap, you know, and uh, hell of a job Takio did to be up there. Man, he was making that race car really wide, and we both had one push to pass left coming to that last last corner, and he'd been, he'd been defending the inside pretty well, almost too well a couple times, but uh, he just outbroke himself a little bit. I know he was going to go deep, and we were able to high-low him and get the win, so awesome job for GoDaddy, Andretti, everybody. I talked to you this morning. You weren't sure what to expect. Were you surprised as, as to how good the car was ultimately? Yeah, I mean, you know, we spoke. I wasn't thrilled after warm-up, but like I said, I've been, I was P20 warm-up in St. P. We don't read a lot into it, and we threw a bunch of changes at the car, and I made a mistake in the first pit stop that put us back a bit. We got out of sequence, you know, hitting uh, for a bit more fuel under one of those cautions there. And it was one of those things that all just came together. The guys were awesome in the pits. They called the right strategy. And at the end of the day, the GoDaddy car had it in it. What was the racing like in the final laps? You had to work on New Garden for a while and then to ultimately get Sato. And as you said, it took several tries. Yeah, I had to work for it, you know, because that uh, that last restart, I lost the position of Pagano and I lost the position of New Garden and we'd fallen back. But I knew once the tires came up, we were a little bit quicker. And uh, as soon as I cleared Pagano, I caught down those guys. And thank God they were racing or else I never would have caught them and uh, managed to get New Garden when he was battling and then just got Sato at the end there. So it's awesome to get the second win, second win of the season for Andretti Autosport GoDaddy. My family's all at home watching Edel Fins, I know that. So hi to you guys. And uh, man, one was good, but two's better. Two wins now for James Hinchcliffe. He jumps uh, six spots in the points up to fourth. An impressive win in a highly entertaining day here at Sao Paulo. That was one that people are going to be talking about for quite some time. Let's review the finishing positions because it was so fast at the end. Hinch, we know. Sato, back-to-back -back podiums, a first and a second. How about that? Andretti gets his first podium of the year. Oriol Servia with fourth. That was awesome. A career best for Joseph Newgarden. That was spectacular. And our pole man, Ryan hunter Ray finishing just outside the top 10 in 11th. We have got so much more from the streets of Sao Paulo. Quick break. We'll have a whole lot more post-race reaction. The mayor has done it again. So the driver who went for the win at the Indy 500 on the last lap last year leads the IZOD IndyCar Series heading back to the Brickyard. He's got a 13-point advantage over Marco Andretti. I've got to say sorry to Marco because I forgot he got that podium at uh, St. Pete at the season opener. That's his second podium of the year. He jumps from fourth to second. Elio loses the championship lead. Hinchcliffe comes from 10th to fourth. Honda Ray is in sixth. And then Wilson, Servia, Di Silvestro maintains her position in the top 10. 
one big name you don't see on that page, Will Power, who is back in 18th position. And there we go, first and second, saying thanks for a great race. Let's hear from Takuma Sato. What a remarkable drive for Takuma Sato from 12th to the front, and you almost pulled off after your debut win, getting another one. Tell me about these final stages when you were hanging on on a set of tires you'd had for uh, more than half the race. Yeah, we, um, we chose the uh, strategy that um, come into the pit uh, when we were leading, but it was obviously nearly, nearly 40 laps left and 37, 35. Uh, guys did a tremendous job, obviously, for the, for the coding, Be good coding. I mean, in it was difficult because tires goes off quite a lot compared to the hinge and uh, new good and, and, and also had a slight issue on the brake so I had a really hanging on but obviously hinge did a great maneuver congrats on, on the, his the second win for the for the this season and uh, we didn't th we didn't think we had a car today to capable win but uh, what a strong buck for the AJ Foyt racing team and I'm really happy the guy did a tremendous job the battle was fierce in the last few laps first with new garden and then with Hinchcliffe and I'm told that they even reviewed some things up top what was your strategy there? Do you feel like you were close to being called for blocking? Did you have any concerns? Um, could say that, um, but I think um, I think we all in the trust, uh, especially on, on the group that we were battling together. We could see on the mirrors and we could see what he's doing, and uh, I'm sure he has got a great confidence on me. And uh, we didn't break through it, so uh, I, I think we're okay. We had uh, we had uh, such a fun. Congratulations, great job. That's your new points leader, Takuma Sato with a runner-up finish here today at Sao Paulo. And isn't that nice for AJ Foyt Racing to say, we lead this series on the way to the Indianapolis 500. Not done yet, more from Brazil in just a moment. Welcome back to Sao Paulo. Well, James Hinchcliffe has won here today in round four of the IndyCar Championship and his teammate Marco Andretti will also an impressive drive for your second podium of the season. The racing was fantastic on television. What was it like for you guys? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It, uh, it was dicey at some points, but uh, really it was just about conserving the push to passes for, for when it counts. Um, and I, at the end there, I was kind of using it when people weren't expecting me to use it, so I can uh, kind of snooker them. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, looking from practice one, I'm, I'm quite pleased with where we ended up today. So congratulations to the Go, Go Daddy crew, but uh, the RC car is looking good in points now. I know you said you wanted to have the points lead going to Andy. Close. He's second at a place where he's got a real big chance of winning next uh, later this month, actually. Thanks, Kevin. So a 75-lap race, 190 miles, decided on the last corner. Jan, final thoughts? I just think it was amazing how you could have all different pit strategies, and in the end, you throw it all out the window, and it comes down to just driver against driver. I love when Sato said, well, yeah, I guess that was a little dicey, but we like each other. Townsend? I just love the fact that we're looking at good, hard, knife fight and racing again. And, you know, the officials are letting the guys sort it out on the track. It all comes back around, and uh, it was a great show today. Robin? He tip of the hat to Tony Cotman for designing this racetrack, one of the raciest street courses we've ever had. It was very, very good, very satisfying. We did not get that fourth different winner, but we got our first repeat winner in the Go Daddy machine for Andretti Autosport, James Hinchcliffe. Hey, Sports Car Racing is up next with World Challenge. We'll be back on Saturday, May 18th at 11 a.m. Eastern with Pole Day from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. As always, for more, go to the uh, for the Eyes on IndyCar series, go to nbcsports.com. What a day. So much to talk about, so much to take away, and those opening road and street courses are done. For the entire team, I'm Lee Diffie saying thanks for watching on your home of open wheel racing, the NBC Sports Network.